What's up, YouTube? Oh, the hell echo. What's up, YouTube? I'm back. Uh, off work tonight. Rough week uh, for Bateman. Back to the normal weekly grind. Uh, hair feeling good, though. It's it's grown out just a little bit. So uh, it was nice at work because I sweat my ass off. Uh, but let me pull up the chat so I can see the comments and everything. Um, if you're just getting a notification, kind of random tonight. Uh, you know, had about a week without a video, so I had to come up in here and, and talk to you guys. To let you know, I am going to be streaming tomorrow night, uh, starting at uh, 9 o'clock, I think. Epic Eric may join me. Uh, I'm not sure what we're going to talk about, but I think we're going to talk about spinner baits. And such, and I'm sure we'll end up talking about buzz baits and all that again. But uh, Saint Chris, I hope you have a better day tomorrow, man. Miserable day suck. And I'm doing something I don't normally do. Uh, I had a pretty rough one, so I decided to grab me a little reds, uh, red apple, or hard cider, whatever you want to call it. These are pretty good. I got a hella echo. Well, let's fix that echo. Let's, Let's fix, fix the echo. echo. Um, uh, tch, 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 tch. Let's fix the echo. All right, see so if that echo's gone, guys. Is that echo better? Justin, I'm just going to assume you work uh, like midnight to, um, you know, 8 in the morning or something like that. That echo gone? All right, good deal. But yeah, I'm here, man. I actually, I got some special baits in the mail. Brian Crawford, you can watch me tomorrow night. I want you to go catch some big fish. My man Brian, he, he's a legend. He's a great human being too. Uh, I'm glad I got to see him over there at Lake Bashirs too. He has really got his swim bait game dialed in too. So. You know what? Uh, going to pouches kind of sucks. To be honest with you, though, I'm 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 fixing to just dial the whole thing back. I'm no legend, man. I'll tell you who is a legend is Mike Buka that makes bullshit swim baits. Don't um, let's always go bullshit, not boy duck it. So, dude, my head was pretty cold. cold. My little girl loves rubbing my head though, and and uh, she. To take Nat with me today. She she liked to rub my head. So, um, my boy Brandon Hunter come over here and he said, and he's called me Dexter forever. He said, "Oh, Dexter, you got your head taken care of." But me and Brandon, we're gonna film some videos. But uh, you know, I'm gonna be honest, guys. I I, I got on YouTube and uh, I'd seen some Twitter happenings. Some shade being thrown at my man, uh, Ben Milliken from uh, from the Googans, and I just happened to get on YouTube tonight. I see a hell of a clickbait by Lunkers TV exposing the Guggen rods, and he gave us ten seconds of looking at a shitty ass China blank rod and trying to tell me how everything was custom. Okay, that's cool. Um, so yeah. I, I guess the Guggen rods are a thing now. And then he threw some shitty ass shade at uh, six cents. Um, went into a shell store. And because the six cents thing was full, he said, uh, well, you can tell what baits really sell here. Uh, from everything I know about shells, they make their people work and they stock their shelves every day. So uh, shout out to shells for keeping the shelves full. Uh, but he also... I don't know, that was just a silly comment because 15 seconds before he was standing in front of the Guggen display, and guess what? They were all full too. So um, that's just a silly comment to make, and it's made for clicks. And you know what? You can throw shade at Six Cents all you want to. You can throw shade at Strike King and all the other people uh, because it looked like, for the most part, most of the pegs were full in that store. So that store manager was doing a good job of making sure things were on display. Uh, but uh, anyway, that's how I feel about that. What's up, Jason? We're just uh, we're just gonna talk some baits and whatnot. But 
I might drink a few beers. But I'll show you something the Guggens aren't going to copy. This is... This come from uh, C.P. Bates. C.P. Bates is um, Craig Powers. Dude, Shields is a great store. So, Craig Powers makes one of the biggest wooden square bills known to man. Uh, this is the C.P. Uh, gosh dang it. Big Humble. So, yeah. So, Craig... Craig had this one right here for me. Check that out. Oh, yeah. A little custom purple fire tiger with a little blue flake in there. Oh, that is a big square, but I mean, that's, that's big. I mean, that boss of concepts, that uh, it's a big square bill. Dude, the big humble makes it tiny. So that's the boss of concepts. Uh, from Andrew Mullins, awesome bait. And there's the big humble. Look how much bigger it is. I mean, the lip is a giant, giant lip, and it's thick. So Craig made this thing to thump really, really hard and crash into big stumps on the Tennessee River and stuff like that. This is basically a magnum wooden flat side. So it's narrow, uh, but that one is sweet right there but because cp is at, uh kind of hard to get these uh i got one for epic eric and i'm gonna send this one to eric so here's kind of a a spring crawl you know that's kind of his color man eric likes that spring crawl check that that's a good looking son of a gun right there and that's the that's the big humble man so Craig had these for sale on Facebook. I reached out to him. Uh, he always posts in the Wood Bait Nation group. So shout out to Wood Bait Nation if any of you guys are, are watching. Uh, I'm trying to get my balsa collection going right now. But And then I, I got another one. I didn't ask for this one. CP threw it in. That's a big humble and like an old, you know, kind of a hot mustard brown fire tire. Great springish color. Work anywhere man i really like the big humble um i think this is going to be one of them baits that i can even pull in in the summer and crank around some mid depth stuff and, and get a big bite but craig powers man he's an awesome dude um one of the best casters you'll ever see so um he said he's working on some cp70s and he said he would do something special for me and, and try to get some built up and i can get them to you guys but dude I gotta get me a thumbnail pic. Check out the big humbles. Yeah. Let me drop it down a little bit. I'll get me a thumbnail pic after that. But shout out to Craig Powers, man. Awesome dude. I've known him, man, since I've been like 15. Um, and he is a legendary fisherman. Uh, Mike Dove, those are CP Bates, uh, Craig Powers, homemade specials, East Tennessee. East Tennessee, man. Uh, and I've got some of his smaller flat sides, but, you know, I like stuff like that. You just can't find any anywhere else. Um, and that whole Magnum square bill thing is really taking off. you got the Six Cents Mini Mag, the 4.0, 8.0 Strike King. Um, and now I've got me a big old flat side. And I know these work. There's a, a buddy of mine, I won't mention his name. He was using a bunch of the uh, early ones that CP was making, not ever selling crushing them on the fall on kentucky lake so that's where we're at with that but uh i got a giant unboxing for tomorrow night ignite swim baits they sent me these guys right here they sent me a giant box full of these swim baits and a bunch of new sizes and colors they also gave me a discount code to share with you guys tomorrow night uh for their website and you'll be able to save 15% off. It activates tomorrow night. Um, and then we're going to do a giveaway. So uh, let everyone know, speaking of giveaway, I haven't forgot about the Six Cents giveaway or the Black Dog Baits. I'll do that before I stream tomorrow night. Um, so I'll, it'll be two streams. I'll have a giveaway stream about 8 o'clock. i got to make sure I get my ducks in a row and get everybody's names in the hat and everything. And then we'll have our regular 
epic Saturday night live, the OG stream, uh, right afterwards at nine o'clock. And, you know, I'll probably stay up. I might stream till past midnight, man, because, uh, you know, it's, uh, I, I gotta, I gotta go back to work Sunday night, so I might as well get back on a nighttime sleep schedule. So, what's up, Z Bait Company? And what's up, Silas? Awesome, Clay. I, 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 uh, I'm gonna try to make it up to East Tennessee and do a little fishing with Craig. He's a big Tennessee fan, so I think we may have to get together and tailgate before a football game or whatnot. I don't know if I'm fishing tomorrow. I got a bunch of honeydews I need to get done, stuff like that. Um, I'm probably going to start fishing uh, on the weekends pretty quickly now that, you know, um, I'm back to work and, and all that. Um, I, I think I'm going to start fishing Pickwick a little bit. It's only like two hours from my house. but It's John D. We'll, we'll, we'll start the mainstream about 9 o'clock. These are pretty good. They're not endorsed by Reds, but. I don't really drink that much either. I mean, I'm, I'll am i be honest, I could buy a 12-pack of Reds, and it'd probably last me all month. Hello, Bass. I watched a little bit of your live stream the other night, man. You do a great uh, great job. I, again, I already knew that after you were on my stream, but you're doing really good, man. I appreciate the information you're giving. Totally different style of fishing from, from what I'm used to. So, guys, make sure you all check out Rich's channel, uh, Hello, Bass. He does a great live stream. And he's got cool videos. He ain't no clickbaiter and all that stuff. So, man, the clickbait is just getting out of control. Um, it's crazy. Chris, I wish I could figure out a way I could do uh, a live giveaway like that. Um... That would be very interesting. Uh, I haven't figured out how to pull from live comments yet. If I could, that's really a way I'd go. Uh, maybe I will have a secret code, so you have to watch the video to know. Like, there would be a secret code or something. I don't know. I don't know. But, yeah, I, I told you all last week, if I could get up to 30,000 subscribers... I would quit my job, and I'm going to be honest with you, um, I may cut that back to like 25,000, and, and yeah, we're like 11,000 away, but um, I'm not going to try to get 25, 30,000 just by uh, promising giant giveaways and begging for subscribers. I'm going to do it my way, like I've been doing. If it takes me another two years, it does, but um, you know, I'm going to put out content where people learn from. Um, and that's just me. Of course, I want to be funny and all that, but I'm not. I've got some. Uh, I've got some stuff in the works. That's all I can say. And um, I think the whole. I had somebody reach out to me, and uh, they said, "Bait man, I really, really like that concept. We we're talking about tackle pickers, and uh, I think possibly we're gonna make that work. I, I think there's a a, a possibility." Um, that maybe I'm going to be doing some traveling, going to tackle shops, uh, trying to pick some baits and educate you guys about baits and what's, what's new, what's not, what's old school, what's worth money and how to figure out if you're going to get had from somebody and try to make a little money and uh, go visit Eric and all kinds of people, uh, and give the history about the lakes and do some fishing and, um, that's what uh, I want to do, man. That's that's kind of where you're going to see this channel go. I'm going to talk about baits and techniques like always, but I think you're going to see that. And then I'm going to start, uh, I'm working on a video right now. Uh, I'm going to have some help writing the script for my man, Pete Robbins. Uh, we're going to try to do a, a couple, couple videos a month. That's just a basic uh, documentary style. Um, the first one's going to be five fishermen, you, pro fishermen you forgot of. If you guys like that, uh, we're going to go keep doing stuff like that. So, All right. What are, what are those Citizen Swim Baits hanging behind you, Bait Man? They look cool. So, I'm gonna two, this is the uh, the Sixth Sense working, or 
working class zero it's not six cents uh, mike gilbert makes that that's a giant this is the six and a half inch version of course that's purple um i can open it up i do not like the uh knuckle spinnerbait at all but i do like the knuckle crankbait from mega bass it's pretty cool so that's a this citizen is the six and a half and if you've never thrown a working class zero bait this is the one i recommend you start out with it's just not uh super gargantuan massive but it is hand poured so you see where it's got that hand poured flat really like this uh, what's cool is gilbert puts a lot of information on here a six aught weighted swim bait hook uh, that's what he does but you see this little pocket on the bottom and that's where that swim bait hook goes in and it comes out the top but your weight sits right here to keep it killed just right I have not fished the mobile Delta or lower Alabama Sean that's kind of why I like streaming you know um, I like to interact with everybody whether good or bad sometimes bad uh, very rarely uh, but I like to talk to everybody and I like to see everybody's comments and have interaction Wait, have interaction, not have an erection. I ain't got no boners on the live stream, just to let you know. But uh, I like to have interaction, talking to people. And that's what I do, man. I, I'm, a, I'm a talker. I'll talk to anybody about anything, anywhere, except politics. Not sure where Elk Deer is, man. Uh, he's probably on that Guggen Rods, just refreshing the website, trying to buy some. Viagra stream sponsored man it could be coming I'm, I'll be 40 soon I might have to get up on that on pill but but here's the other working class zero this is the citizen this is the big daddy this is the seven and a half inch citizen so this color is blue so I, I'll stick to my blues and my purples but this one takes I believe it's a 10 aught weighted swim bait hook and you see I love those tails it's like a wedge back there wedge shaped a uh, boot tail um, that blue man that, that's nasty I like the blue I like the purple they make some greens um, you just got to get on their website sign up for the mailing list uh, for working class zero uh, and you'll usually get a couple days heads up before he drops some baits and you got to get on them quick but Mike Gilbert is a guy I'd love to get on a podcast and just talk big baits with and, and designing baits because I think he's done a hell of a job on the citizen and the guys catch them on it man i i haven't thrown it much you guys can see they're sitting here in the pack but i'll, I'll have my day um <laughs> thanks byron i appreciate that byron from missile baits has refrained from speaking of my boner well that i'll, I'll do no more byron we need to go fishing, but I, I'm sorry I had to flake out and I had them TV shows to film. We're almost done with that. So, no, Blake, you didn't miss the six cents giveaway. I, the only thing missing is me doing it. I've just I went back to work and got really busy this week, and uh, I'm gonna do it tomorrow night at eight o'clock before a stream. What reel do I recommend for big swim baits, Corey? Uh, I like a Tranks uh, 300. The 400 is just a little bit big for me, or I want a big dial with the two of 200. Um, I've got I gotta get get one ordered, you know. Um, but if you're throwing something that's not really that big, you know, like the Babe or or paddle tails, uh, even the five inch ignites and stuff like that, uh, especially the soft plastic swim baits, you don't need a big giant 300 reel. But once you where that 300 size reel helps is when you step up to that 20 to 25 pound fluorocarbon you can get much more of it on a spool now if you're throwing stuff like a glide bait like a rashi glide or s waiver 168 even to the 200 any of that big heavier stuff or like these big citizens battle sheds that 300 size reel is the way to go man um and you can find a shimano tranks a good deal byron byron over here he's he's he caught a i'll give him a shout out he caught a dd on a big swim bait this spring i was pretty proud of that guy i always, I, I like to joke around because he's got a crazy swim bait collection but he's in you know he fished a lot of florida lakes and uh he lives in nashville and he he caught him a tennessee in tennessee west tennessee i won't give his secret spot up 10 pounder dd on a big swimmer 
And uh, Matt Robertson will come on. All I have to do is ask him. I think he's going. He already told me he'd be on here. But uh, well, you know what, Byron? I've yet to catch a DD, so we're going to have to go. I, I ain't going to Florida to catch a DD. I'm sorry. I think best chances within 10 hours of me for DD is a couple of places we know in West Tennessee and Texas, man. Anybody watch Kelly Jordan and Gary Klein fish the Camelot Bell Ranch? Holy smokes. I'm glad that, uh, I'm, I'm glad that, uh, KJ caught some big ones because he hadn't caught Jack in MLF this year. And he's my boy. I'll, I'll, I'll love KJ to death, but he's, he's had a rough one over there. Dude, that's awesome. I would love to do that, Chad Zone. I definitely would like to pick a fan to stream with. Um, so, Chris, uh, I'm going to let you know about uh, the Babe. Um, those guys reached out to me, said, when you stream, you're not let them know. We apologize for the slow shipping. We're working. And we totally underestimated how quickly... We would sell out and they told me they had almost 600 baits and yeah but there's going to be a special edition uh bait come next week it's going to be table rock with gold flake but it's going to be really dark like an old school chartreuse purple uh, not as much transparency. The reason they went transparent with the table rock uh, now was um, it are not as bold is because they want to kind of cater to the clear water guy because there's not a lot of colors they have that's suited for just perfect clear water and and they'd made some prototypes and the guy said dude you need a translucent chartreuse and purple for up north and so um, that's what they went with and uh, dude it I'm telling you, it's kind of weird. You look at it in one light, and you'll be like, man, I don't know about it. And then all of a sudden, the light hits. It's like the bottom's glowing. So that I had one in here. Uh, they sent me a bunch of stuff. Um, but uh, the the one they're coming in this week, it's like Barney purple. It's a real chartreuse purple. It's in gold flake. So. Steve, any tips? Uh, the best thing I can tell you uh, about the Babe is it is sensitive to speed. Um, it's not a bait that you want to reel fast use a six to one reel and just throw it out there and just reel slow i mean slow because it wants you and, and and how you can figure that out is just flip it two or three feet from you by a boat dock or where you can see it and just reel slow and once you get that reeling where you see that head wiggling yeah mm -hmm. the head wiggles and the tail shakes, you got it, man. Just remember that speed. But you, you know, the harness version, it's meant to count down. You count it about ten, count it down to how many seconds, and you actually want to fish it, you know, up off the bottom. Um, it's great over the tops of grass, around boat docks, uh, over tops of lay down, stuff like that. You don't want it in the lay down. You just want it above and just creeping. Uh, straight cash, homie, man. That color is sick, man. That's that green is nasty. Austin Hicks, good question. Uh, thoughts on MLF guys fishing the pro circuit? You know what? Bring it on. Uh, FLW needs something over there. I mean, they don't really have but a handful of standout guys, and I'm all for um, I'm all for more competition, better competition. What's up, John Mango? Great question, Silas. When do I throw a 10-inch ribbon tail versus a magnum shaky head during the summer? So, me personally, I don't throw a lot of magnum shaky heads. Uh, the heaviest I'll throw is about 3 eighths of an ounce. Now, you know, a lot of guys have success with those half ounce and three quarters with the big tuna hooks in them. And that's good. I personally think, because I fish a lot of brush piles, uh, they get hung up quite a bit. So I'm throwing a 10-inch ribbon tail worm. Anytime I'm fishing a lot of brush, 
or heavy cover stuff like that and i i've always preferred a ribbon tail i'm a lucky strike ringer guy um zumo monster believe it or not that old gambler ribbon tail worm is a really good one i love the gambler plum ribbon tail worm um it's very underrated no one talks about it but they make a 13 inch ribbon tail gambler does and it's really really good um but for me it's just a i like i like the brush deal Byron, yes, I am drinking apple flavored beer. Uh, I'm not a beer snob. I drink very few beers. I mean, this is the first alcoholic beverage I've had in about six months. So, yeah, here's how I feel about that. Um, about the elite uh, BPT guys fishing the pro circuit. I fished Tuesday night jackpot tournaments against Dan Moorhead and terry bolton in the same boat and that's and then you may have sean penn and another guy in another boat and you had all these tournament directors from flw who basically fished all during the week um if they didn't have a tournament to go to and you know what it i don't run from competition and i'll be honest i suck you know i'm not a good fisherman i, I pretty much suck I mean, I'll, I've held my own, but I don't go out there every day. And I've never tried to say, hey, I'm a pro fisherman, or I want to be a pro, or I'm the best fisherman on Kentucky Lake. No, I'm not. But by gosh, I can tell you what a bait feels like, smells like, what's inside it, where it's made, and if it will catch fish. Uh, but, you know, if they beat me, they're supposed to beat you. If they're pro fishermen, they should beat you. And it's a good feeling when you come to weigh in and, oh, you know, you beat Terry Bolton and Dan Moorhead. Now, saying that, it did happen very rarely. Alan Stalls, what's up, bait man? I really like your channel. I'd like to know how to donate money. Well, uh, I've got a PayPal link in the description. You can send that way. Or uh, there's a super chat button that has a little dollar sign, and you can fill it out and whatnot. But I'm not worried about donations. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, I'm fixing to get a P.O. box, and my favorite donation is fan mail. I love fan mail and bait, so... Very few times, Mr. Drake Toby, uh, very few times. Um, and a lot of it is, you know, Terry doesn't fish a lot of tournaments outside BFLs and stuff like that. And and he doesn't fish a lot of Tuesday nighters anymore. And you know, Terry's married and all that stuff, and I get it. Um, I never beat Mike Terry, I can tell you that. I've been I've been waiting for Missile Baits to come out with a new ribbon tail. Hint, hint, Byron. So if y'all don't know, Byron is the national sales director of Missile Baits, and um, dude, I love their stuff. D bombs, y'all guys looking for them freaking? I got them right here. If y'all watching Smallmouth Crush? Look at here, Byron. If y'all need some desert craw missile baits all you gotta do is get up on their website uh they were they had some crazy sales on uh clothing too um american made right there in salem virginia dude what can you say i made mean, d-bomb one of the best flipping baits ever made i think so i think so dude a 10 inch quiver would be nasty byron nasty all right, I'm going to answer a few questions real quick. If you guys want me to get Byron on here, we can have a co-stream with Byron. And y'all can just y'all can just hawk it up about missile baits and whatever. He's, he's a bait connoisseur, man. He would be the guy to ask about Florida fishing, too. So It does suck that Pradco dropped Zell. Dude, Byron, you got any of them gambler crankbaits? I need one or two just for a collection. I'm not going to throw it. So I fished a tournament, a gambler owners only, a gambler tournament on Kentucky Lake. Byron was the tournament director. He was excellent. He's pretty much like Ron Lappin. And uh, the dudes that won it, uh, Ronnie Cyrus and his partner, they went and found a bunch of gambler crankbaits. They actually made them. And they freaking stomped a mud hole on everybody. And people were like, oh, they're cheating. They didn't make a crankbait. And Byron's like, no, nah, dude. Gambler made a crankbait. 
What is the most underrated gambler bait? I think it's the ugly otter. I will tell you. The flapping shad. The guys that know how to fish that flapping shad, do they crush them. You can work it like a fluke, but you can cut a little cut in that tail and buzz it on the surface. Oh, yeah. What's up, Cole and Jay, man, making some vids. Congra hey, guys, Cole and Jay just hit 140,000 subs on YouTube. And still got time to check out old Redneck Bait Man up on here on a Friday night. So I appreciate the support, guys. Tackle Craft up in here. What's up, TK? God, there's another guy we got to get on here. We got to get TK talking some custom painting, too. I have thrown the Rage Tail Anaconda. It's a sneaky good worm, man. All right, I'm going to answer a few questions here. I don't have Eric in here to moderate. I, I need a moderator. Who wants to be a moderator? Yes, uh, Kevin, I am going to do some live streaming over at Lake X for sure. And if this ledge fishing deal uh, will, will take off, our fish are behind. We're going to get some live ledge fishing. All right, Hella Bass, I'll make you mod if I can do this. You keep the cuss words out of here. Hella Bass is now a moderator for my channel. I don't know what that ha happens, but... Oh, man. All right, Tackle Craft, let me answer a few questions. We, we will talk some Kentucky Lake Triton Owners Tournament. Uh, I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Dude, Ron Cyrus is a great guy. Believe it or not, my, Byron, my wife, her aunt dated Ronnie for a long time, and... It, I was over their house, his house, all the time. And he's just like a good old boy brother to me. Now, a little rough around the edges, and he ain't going to deny that. The dude can catch him. Him and Jeff, great people, man. Let's see. Okay, you're looking for a topwater rod, Dean, and you can't decide. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. Don't spend a whole lot of money. Uh, on a topwater rod, all you need is uh, like a 6'8 to 7 foot medium, moderate action. Uh, the one Brent Anderson uses, the Redemption Rod, topwater rod, is excellent. Um, it's about 140 bucks. Um, you can find those old All Stars. I mean, my, my topwater rod, I've shown it off, man. I'll show it again. Bring back the memories. God damn. I'm going to have to get some AC in the bait room. It's hotter than two rats in a wool sock screwing behind a dryer, bud. Let's see if I can get this thing off here. I'm hung. Of course, when I want to get one rod, I get hung up on a bunch of them. I guess I need to start using those six cents rod socks they send me all the time. What the heck? So this is the OG of OG topwater rods right here. This is the old all-star Zell rolling top water special here. Y'all can see the old, oh, yes, old Zell signature. And that is the most old school Crone Arc right here, the Pearl. I got to put some new line on it. Yeah, rod wraps were cool, except they would fade and then, yeah. But, dude, the right action on this. This one is, uh, I believe, six foot. Um, Six foot eight. It's the C seven eighty three. Yep, top water special. Six foot six. Dude, this rod and pop bars and walking baits. It's awesome. Now you can't use real big heavy walking baits on it, so. Alright. Six foot six, six eight, medium moderate. Perfect. You can find 
all kinds of companies make really good. Dobbins uh, makes a, a excellent champion topwater rod. Cashin makes a really good topwater rod. Byron, you might want to throw that model number out there because I've used one. I couldn't remember the model number on their top, good topwater stuff. So, uh, wind grips. Uh, I don't know. I don't use them. Uh, so here's my deal on wind grips. They're great for moving baits. Like I throw it on a topwater rod, a jerk bait rod, uh, probably a cranking rod, and spinner baits, chatter baits. I don't want anything on bottom contact because um, I used to play golf all the time and I sucked at golf just like fishing. But the grips you put on your clubs are meant to dampen vibration, okay? Why would you want to dampen the vibration in your graphite rod? You, I want to, I want to feel the fish bite the bait. So, man, it all started. So what's crazy is my boss at at, at Pella, his dad is the was the rod designer for All Star. Now he designs rods for Lou's. So you're seeing a lot of All Star uh, specs in those new Lou's rods. His name's Bob Brown. He's a great dude. And Bob was the guy that designed that rod, the the Worm Rod One, the Worm Rod Two. It's just a crazy small world that you know my boss at at, at Night Shift Production Manor during he's younger than me by like three years. His dad was the dude designed that. So So let's talk TK Tackle Craft. He said he wanna talk some Kentucky Lake mid two thousands. That was uh that was a fun time to be alive, TK. That's all I can say about that really. Um I fished uh I, I would say we had two peaks there from 06 to 08 was really good. And I went on a tear with the guy I fished with. We won quite a bit of money. Um, and But we didn't have, we won a lot of tournaments with 22, 23 pounds, but it was an all day grind, it seemed. We had some spots where we caught, you know, good limits of fish. But there's a lot of things that in that period that weren't, you know, I wasn't throwing a lot of big swim baits then. Um, wasn't throwing the 6XD, 10XD kind of came in on the, a little bit later, but we caught a ton on that DT16 and stuff, but you would get on schools. And I, I remember this TK. Um, I kind of, I'd fished a, um, a coaster or whatever with a Sam Newby. uh, Sam's a little short guy from Arkansas or something like that. Um, great dude, um, very dry sense of humor. And I lost like four fish on a shaky head and spinning rod. And he said, listen here, dude, put that son bitch on a bait caster and set the hook on him. And he just, he handed me a reaction innovation shaky head. He said, throw it on 12 pound fluorocarbon if you got any. I didn't. So he gave me a spool of line and John Mango, yeah, I can see your comments. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm storytelling. I'll get back to you here in just a second. And, um, uh, I caught me three fish. The funniest thing is after the, we went from basically Moores to Kentucky Dam Marina, which is only like, you know, five miles. And I offered him 40 bucks of gas and he asked me if I was some kind of idiot. We didn't burn no gas, but, um, but so I figured out how to fish that shaky head deep. And I, I was using a zoom trick worm and I'm telling you TK, we got on a drop and didn't catch a lot of giants, but I could literally get a bite every cast it was like for an hour. And I kept thinking, man, I'm going to catch a four or five pounder. They're all like two, two and a half, two and a half, maybe a three. And, uh, man, that was crazy. And we'd get on some crankbait schools, man. You'd have them fired up. And it was like, I can't get the little ones off. Now, I never ran into those mega schools of like four or five pounders during from 06 to 08. Uh, a lot of our biggest fish, we could catch us a limit of 14 to 15 pounds cranking and then it was time to pull out the old monster the football jig and find these small schools or individual fish that are on brush or stumps and catch a five six pounder um, and then you had the 10 xd came out and those all those two and a half the two pounders that everybody been throwing back and wasn't keeping during a tournament them some bitches grew up and so, like, from 2012 to 2015 was some of the stupidest bass fishing 
you'll ever see. And I'll be honest with you, I would have put Kentucky Lake up against any lake in the country. It was that good. I know, guys, I, we could go out just on a Monday afternoon, whatnot, take a 10XD, uh, maybe a Ben Parker Magnum Spoon, a hair jig, and a football jig. And if you didn't catch 23 to 25 pounds, it wasn't fun. We would get on some great big schools. Uh, but that, that spoon changed a lot of things too, man. Uh, but I think uh, you want in on the stream, Byron? We can put you in on the stream. I'd have to go get my headphones, though. And probably another beer. All right, guys, y'all want Byron on here? I'll see if I can figure out how to get him on here. Let me go get my headphones. Oh, damn. Uh, all right, I'm going to get Byron on here. I had to get me another queer beer, or whatever you want to call it. Plug these in here. All right, if this don't work, it's very possible. Uh... I'm gonna, what I'll have to do, Byron, is I'll have to call you on Skype. What's up, Justin Sword? I want to thank Justin Sword for that awesome net bait uh, donation giveaway. Thanks, old Toad, for that $10 make you holla. That's hilarious, Kyle. All right. Surely I can find Byron over here. All right. I'm calling you right now, Byron. All right. I can't see you yet, Byron. Oh, it says my connection is too weak. What the heck? All right, we're good. We're good. Byron is out by his power poles. Let's see if I can pull him into the stream here. Uh, add source. Uh, it's okay. You'll probably be behind a little bit. Uh, see if we got Byron on the stream yet. Here he is. You're, you're, you're going to be... There we go. Getting the landscape view. Uh, you have a little bit of echo. I'll try to fix that. Whoop. Whoop. I gotta fix my screen now. I'm doing all this on the fly, like I know what I'm doing. Do you have your sound on your laptop on? Because it's like reverbing bad. Whoa. All right. I might can fix this. We'll see. All right, talk now. Got a little vibration.
And maybe it's just me. They said we can't hear Byron. All right, all right. Scott makes your volume jump up. Yeah, it does. Give us, give us, a, give us give just a few minutes. minutes. We'll try to we'll try get Byron's audio, audio issues, issues uh, working, uh, working here. here. Okay, okay that'll, that'll work. That'll work. All right, Byron's, Byron's going to call me from, from his from laptop, laptop and see if and we see can't, if we get, can't that get that to that work. To work. Um, um, Definitely, definitely an echo. An echo. I could hear on my end that time. So, so I don't know what the heck is going on. Mute, unmute, unmute system mute. sound. Okay. My dad gum kids are fixing to come in here. It's going to be a ho heck of a shit show. Let me get back up on the Skype. My name Skype's froze too. What the heck? I'm gonna have to control alt delete some stuff. Alright. Yeah, sounds good. No more echo. We'll get this going. Byron's going to call me back here in a second from his laptop. What's up, Bate Jr.? You tell the, tell everybody hello? Hello. I'm going to get Byron's uh, mug off here. What have you been doing, Bate Jr.? Mm, playing. Playing what? You've been playing some Call of Duty? Mm -hmm. I want tier 100 today. You got unlocked tier 100. Okay. What what happens at tier one hundred? Well, um, so when when you on at tier hundred, it just says battle pass complete. Man. Well, that's good. Well, hey, I'm gonna stream in here. It's really hot. Okay, mm -hmm. so we're gonna go inside tonight. You could be on bait show tomorrow. Okay. Okay. All right. Hey, found it. I guess I did break it, Byron. I don't know what's going on. I'll try. I'll call you again. Let's see if we can get this thing. You may have to turn that Xbox off. My internet's getting slow. Okay. I won't try Byron one more time. I believe we're gonna get another one of these beers. All right. I got you. Can you talk? All right. Let's see if uh, streams. New Tech NDI Skype. Let's see if this one pops in. All right. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll get it. It just keeps like I can hear you, but it's like vibrating. Like, it sounds like some kind of vibration. It's got to be these piece of shit streaming software I've got. Oh, that's stream only. Now talk. Oh, that sounds good. All right. All right, let's see if the stream says... Still no sound. Are you sure you're not on mute or something? Damn, I can hear him fine. What the heck? What? No, you have to like pull. It's not like Facebook Live, you know, on Facebook you can just add. Uh, it says unplug my headphones. Well, I can't hear. I can't hear Byron if I unplug my headphones. I would have to put you on like... Can you hear me? I can hear you. 
Okay. Is it going to echo through here? It's not echoing for me. Okay. Huh. Also, probably the fact that we've been drink I've been drinking a little bit is not helping anything out. Um, Cheers. This is a I mean, it's not a real, real beer, but it's a... Those are good enough. That's usually what I drink, to be honest with you. I mean, it's a low carb. Yeah, dude, you have freaking lost the weight like nobody's business. Hey, somebody says it's all good. We got it. So I'll just lose the damn headphones. If there's no echo, we're good, and there's no need for some headphones because I can hear you. So, legendary Byron, former gambler sales manager, now Missile Bates national sales manager, is on here. I can't see the comments, so I got to pull up on my phone. Dude, check. I'm just trying to be like you. Check check out the dome. That's good. Yeah. Now you just got to get some beard like this. Man, I had a beard that would blow your mind, and it is so gray, it looked just nasty. I can tell you this. It's hotter than hoot any hell in Kentucky right now. I'm sweating like I've been at work, and I don't like it. I'm going to have to get, get some AC up in this bait room. I don't have one of these nice, fancy garages like you got. You know, your drywall it, isn't even, isn't it's even, for it's for sale. It's for sale. It'll fit a Skeeter FXR 21 easily. Is your FXR for sale? It, it comes with the house for the right price. Well, you know what? That sounds like a hell of a deal. It's a hell of a deal. Like, I will take less for the house if this boat's sold. So we're good. Mr. Drake Toby, I've definitely seen Gay Goog and Rod do, or Rob do a Six Cents bash today on a video. I thought that was, I don't, I'm not even getting into it. You know what? Somebody told me one day, this this is a good story. Don't give crickets an audience. So I'm not going to give him any more audience than he deserves. Yeah. You is know what? Better sound, guys? I think you sound excellent. Can you hear me now? Kevin's saying go up on the sound. All right. Byron, turn up the volume or get close to your mic. I've done both. We'll see how that works. All right. Well, this it, everybody's computer is very variables. You know what I mean? One guy's, but oh, you're so low. The next guy's like, holy shit, turn it down. So, um, Steve, my show has been awesome. Um, no issues whatsoever. This is the uh, you know, my last year's boat ran like a top no issues at all this one uh it'll push this fxr 21 pretty good what what kind of speed do you get out of that the fxr so I, i've been in menendez's boat and we get about 68 to 70 does that sound about right he carries a ton of stuff yes he does um now with just me in this boat, and I carry a bunch of stuff too, but just me, I've had it up to 76. Now, putting a second person in there, um, I can do 74, you know, with the winds at your back, but like, no problem 72. So Menendez has too much stuff in his boat. Yeah, I know. Dude, I hate to rag on my boy Mark, but he pulled out. Oh, I love you. I've known him my whole life. I love to rag on Mark. So that if Mark fished the same bass club as my dad, in, in the Paducah Bass Club or whatnot. So chances are my dad knew your dad, and we just don't know it till now. I probably did, yeah. Um, so it is a small world, and uh, but dude, he pulls out the most rank terminal tackle box I've ever seen. This Plano box is probably twenty years old. It's lead weights. It's got like. Lead tungsten. I mean, he's got good hooks and all that, but it's just like not organized. You know, he's having to dig through. To, is this a quarter or eighth? And it's a small thirty-six hundred box. I'm like, dude, you gotta do something. It's bad. Yeah. Uh, I'm still saying my volume's low. Well, oh, well, you know what you can do. You can talk louder. I have the yeah. deepest voice for a five foot five guy in the world. Five foot, see, I got you. I'm 5'6". Oh, yeah. Well, I am too, but I got to wear my cowboy boots like I did at the Classic. That was embarrassing. You shouldn't do that anymore. <laughs> you know how bad my feet hurt? I'd prefer you wear boots to drink that beer, though. 
Gosh, damn. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, rank terminal tackle. Yeah, dude. So Mark is like old school. Like he comes, he'll come to my house or, or whatnot. And he just looks at like, you know, like he's seen the quiver and he's like, now what in the world is this thing? And I'm like, dude, it's like one of the hottest baits out there. It's from missile. And he's like, well, what do you use it for? I'm like, a Nico rig. See, there's people, I, I sold a custom run to Bridgemaster uh, fishing products. They're on Lake Kissimmee. He ordered, uh, it was like 1,700 bags of black blue with a blue flake tail. Mm. For Florida, right? Yeah. So when we brought this bait out, we're thinking Nico rig, Tokyo rig, cool. Mm hmm. They've been eating it up in Florida. He's he's about to order a second run. Wow. I'm blowing my mind. But it's it's one of the most versatile baits we've come out with here recently. When we when we brought out the Ned Bomb at the Classic last year, like we thought that was good, you know, just sales wise in the month of March. We almost tripled that on the quiver. Wow. Like it's it's definitely the best product. I'm, I'm gonna grab one so people know what we're talking about. You know, Hate to turn this into a missile bait show, but we go where the viewers want to go. I'm not. I'm not trying. That's all right. We can talk Strike King or Stro or Skeeter or Yamaha or. We whatever. just ain't gonna talk no Googan bullshit on here, bud. Or we could talk how you don't drink real beer. I'm not gonna lie. If I had me one more of those, I may not be on the stream very much longer. We might get a little, little tipsy, huh? Yeah, bud. It's been a while. So I love this color. This is the, the cherry blossom quiver. Please tell me y'all sell a ton of these. Because I really like that blue hue that goes down here. Don't ask why. So like that's a good that's a good color for our area. Yes. And I think it's just now getting to be that time. You know, this is what I was told about red. Uh, this color is called cherry blossom. This is the quiver 6.5. They make two sizes. I don't order small shit because I just really don't um, throw a lot of small stuff. But, man, my kids are raising hell. But anyway, um, I was told on the red, uh, this is from Jake Lawrence. You know, it's one of the first colors that uh, dissipates in the color spectrum underwater. But when you got like a plum or a red bug, trick worm or whatnot down fishing deep or rubble worm in morning dawn, My gosh, my kids. Can you hear that? Can you hear them, kids? It's, it's... But anyway, those fish are biting that red because they feel the vibration through the ladder line. They're not getting a good look at it, so they eat it. Whereas on blues and some of your greens are the uh, last colors they can't see. So in deep water, that red, it's just making a vibration. They just react to it and eat it. Where some other colors, especially in clearer water, they see it and they kind of pick at it. It works good. Pickwick, Kentucky Lake, Center Hill, uh, Old Hickory, no, because fish don't live there. But man, I've caught fish. I don't hate. I spent three I've days on Old Hickory, and I don't think I've caught three fish in three days. It has been that bad to me. Gonna throw a shaky head or anything super bug color. Uh, Drake Toby says, "I'm sure it's been said before, but what's your home lake, Byron?" Man. Percy Priest, really, is the closest one to me and, and where I spend the most time. Um, I've, I've been up here from Florida for, I don't know, six years, but uh, I've really been fishing for two, two and a half. So, Percy Priest, to answer your question, short answer. All right, let's, I'm going to be straight real with you. One of the, Percy Priest is probably one of the most underrated smallmouth lakes in the country. Yes. Big ones. For sure. In good numbers. Yeah, we so we went out yesterday yesterday afternoon after my work was done. And um buddy of mine, we caught in three hours we caught nineteen. Mm. And out of nineteen, I'd say at least half of them were smallmouth. Really? You know, with 
with a good three, three and a half pounder in there. But so I've also heard uh, Priest is a really good offshore lake too. That, that's what I've heard. I'm, I'm going to try to figure that out here coming up. Uh, right now, and, and tell me if I'm wrong, but I would swear that they're betting in six to eight foot of water. That sounds right. What so, my mind? For me being from Florida, I'm like, man, if I can't see the bed, they're not on bed. Right. Here, like I'm shallow, I've got the, the spinnerbait, square bill, chatterbait, you name it, going shallow for the shad spawn, and it's a ghost town. I see them on the graph to the right, I back out, keep the boat in 10 foot, three pounder, three pounder, two and a half, three pounder, four pounder. You know, after I move out, but it's on that stinking micro football that we make. I love it, and mm. I caught a fish on it here lately. But I don't want to get hung up on it, so I want to throw anything but that. I go back to it. Dude, that micro football is a great jig. It's the deal. With the baby D-bomb trailer, like, like they'll pick it up and move it. So I'll fire a net, net bomb in there, mm -hmm. you know, doing that. That way I can just lean back up on them. Are you using? Are you throwing the uh, micro football on that the cashing micro jig rod, or is that a spinning rod or bait caster rod? Spinning rod. Spinning so rod. Like the micro jig and the micro football are made for you know eight pound line spinning rod stuff. That's actually what I would consider a power finesse, power finesse technique. You're you're incorporating the power fishing, but using yeah. light line and a smaller yeah. bait. But you get bit, so I'll throw our half ounce or three quarter ounce headbanger football jig. Won't get a bite. You fire that, you know, micro football in there, they'll eat it. Guess what? I'm looking forward to throwing the three H micro football on the ledges this year. That's what I have, I think. Cause I got them right here. I gotta load up, man. My my finesse jig box is not quite as thick as yours, bud. Let's see if I can find that, what he's talking about. So this is my favorite Kentucky Lake color. So here's here's the the finesse or the micro football jig. This is my color deal. You know Kentucky Lake. We like that dill pickle, dirty Sanchez color. Yeah. So I like that green watermelon. And I actually take the crawfather, and this is don't get mad. This is what I do on the Kitek tungsten football jig. I take the craw farther and I chop it down real small where it's almost just like those little twister tails. Dude, this sucker gets bit. So the Kitek's a little bigger than ours. It is. It is. It is. Yeah, there's uh, the show comparison. So here's the micro in my right hand. And then there's the Kitek. You can tell the Kitek is bigger. I think if you cut... You, you, you could probably even put just a little Ned bomb in there. Dude, cut the baby D bomb in half. Mm -hmm. trim, the, trim the sides up a little bit. Cut the little legs off to where it's, it looks like a chunk. And it's got more action than a pocket crawl. Really? Now, yeah. that's a bold statement, bud, because the pack of crawl is OG. It goes nuts. Huh. Hey, uh, here's your question. Uh, Austin Hicks says, how many pro staff applications does missile get a month? Every day. <laughs> yeah. Now I will say I, I really, uh, you know, I, I dog on the pro staff stuff quite a bit on here, but uh, missile they do it right. Um, you just can't start tagging them on social media and they give you ten percent off in the bag of worms. They they they're looking for good human beings for one, um, and they want you to know about the product. They're just not going. Oh yeah, sure, you know tag us on instagram they want you to if they want you to go into a local shop and if people are asking questions you can answer it uh, you, they want you to do the old school try to get their baits in places um and i respect that man there's so much i, I don't want to get started on here you know i can go for a little we've both been around for a little bit but um our bomb squad i don't handle the bomb squad thank god um, because I may be a little jaded. Um, but Shannon Wheeler does a great job with that. And I do know that the bomb squad is full for right now. 
but um, we've got an awesome, awesome group of guys that, that work. Um, and that's that's one of the keys that we're looking for is guys that work and go into the shops like Kevin's talking about. And, um, you know, it, at the end of the day, the job is to sell more baits and move the needle. Um, if, if, like, you won't see us just you know, sign on with a national company and give a, you know, application. Fee right. <laughs> national pro staff. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of, we're kind of OG when it comes to that kind of stuff, which, and I like that. Yeah. Uh, and here's what I like about missing. I feel like we're rehashing our podcast and that's okay. We're going to talk about some other stuff in a minute. Um, all the missile bait stuff. It's your own deal. It's not a copy of nobody's. Uh, I mean, people are going to say, well, the D-bomb's a beaver. Yeah, it's a beaver-style bait. But y'all, John pretty much went out of his root way to make sure it wasn't a direct copy. It's got its own ribs, own swimming action. The plastic's much thinner. And it's a different style bait. And John would tell you straight up, he said, dude, I use a beaver all the time. He yeah. said, There's, I mean, they got a different fall in action. Is, is like selling them. Like in your in your shop, you need to carry the reaction innovation stuff, especially the sweet beaver. There's two different applications. So that beaver, it doesn't have a lot of action, but it's got a hell of a glide. Yes, so it does. Falls, it's gonna glide down. So when they're looking for a little more movement, that's the bait to throw. Now the D bomb, you put a little heavier weight on it, and it's gonna fall straight down. But those little legs are going to kick and have that subtle action. So with the rib body, it traps air. You've got some little air bubbles going on. And a lot, of, and it's something that a lot of people don't talk about is that when that bass eats that bait, there's that crush feel. Yes. Rings kind of give way. So they're like, oh, okay, this this isn't mm -hmm. as abnormal, you know. And they hold on a little bit longer. I and think that's better. You get a better hook set. So. That's that's my sales pitch. We can move on. That's okay. That's actually not a sales pitch. That's actually letting guys know why it's designed like it's designed. And that's why, you know me, Byron, I love that Lucky Strike ringworm. That's my favorite. If, I, if I'm stranded on an island, but yeah. it collapses so well, you put the hook on there, it's super soft, and when those fish bite it, it's like they get the hook. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's... You know, that's no offense to old monster. Power worms are really soft and stuff, but I feel the hookup ratio on that worm is really good. Yeah. These guys are talking about Bridgemaster. Man, Bridgemaster does a lot of custom run stuff in Florida, but they they are the ones that have, they call it the Bridgemaster Special, which is the, the six and a half cover in their color, black, blue, with the blue flash tail. And they will ship, so. I'm going to make you a little hotter here so they can hear you. Um, so let's talk about this. Let's talk about some old school OG bass fishermen. Who were some of the guys you looked up to? Um, shit, we're about the same age. What are you, Byron? I'm 34. What are you, 36? I'm about to be 36, yeah. So who were some of those old school guys um, you looked up to? Man, like KVD. I've always followed him. He's the man. Everybody knows that. Mm -hmm. uh, until he retired when he went to MLF. <laughs> um, yeah, th there's a bunch of people about to retire, I'm afraid. Yeah, well. Um, Mark Menendez, you know what I mean? I feel like I, he'll get mad at me if I don't say that. But, um, man, I I'll tell you what. I'll go one, like, off the radar. So, Bill Smith. Is and backwards. Oh, Bill Smith. I know Bill. I work for Bill. And Ronnie. Bill Smith, I owe a lot to Bill Smith. Um, not that, and I want to get into like story time here, but he, um, he was probably my biggest mentor when it came to fishing. So like my dad bass fish and tournament fish and all that kind of stuff. Well, then it got to a point where I, I you know, I was asking questions that he couldn't answer. I had met Bill, and Bill and my dad like worked out a deal. Um. 
to where, you know, if I wasn't screwing up, right, because I was getting to that age where I was starting to drink a little bit and goof off, well, like, Bill would call and check in with Dad, like, right. hey, is he, you know, is he effing up? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, cool. Let's bring him up to Lake St. Clair, and he can pre-fish with me for the the FLW or whatever that Larry Nixon won. Um, so I did, and that was cool. But, uh, man, I owe a lot to Bill Smith, you know, as a mentor. Um, he's the one that was sponsored by Gambler back in the day and had me go in there and pick up stuff when we would fish on Okeechobee. That's how I got the relationship going with the original owners of Gambler, and, and the rest is kind of history. So Yeah, Bill, uh, Bill's a cool guy, and I'll, I'll be honest with you. Uh, you know, I worked for him, and there's Bill you work with, and there's Bill once uh, uh, you're off the clock. And he, he was always a good dude, but I learned a lot about baits in the industry from Bill. He had a lot of good connections. Him and Andre at Reaction were tight. Yeah, Bill introduced me to John um, 20 years ago. Um, they were rooming together at the time. And uh, then it became, when John came down, I just fished with him. Because Bill got, you know, to doing Bill stuff. But um, He... I'll be honest, that's the dude that brought the bass tricks to Kentucky Lake. I mean, he brought them up there to Ronnie's shop at the cabin. Yep. And people weren't just buying them, but he knew. He he kept telling us, he said, it's going to happen. Somebody's going to win a tournament. It won't be now. It may be soon. And then, I think two years later, all of a sudden, Skeet wins on the 7-inch. And they went crazy. But... um, I tell you, a guy I really like and respect is Steve Kennedy. You know, yes, he just like like I don't need sponsors. I'm gonna do it my own way. And mm-hmm. Rick Clun was like that for a long yes, time. Yes, he was. Clun's YouTube is pretty lit, man. Have you seen any of his videos? Dude, I haven't. Like, I, I'm failing. I, I honestly didn't know he had a YouTube. Yeah, I mean, Menendez was like, listen, dude, I know you watch YouTube. Watch Rick Klein. I'm watching it. He said, your your production value is like zero. But he just... But he just gets there on a picnic table and he spills beans and you're like, whoa. Yeah, but it's all knowledge. Like the little nuggets that he drops or like what everybody else is chasing. But and, and speaking of David Dudley, like his channel is awesome. He is not afraid to put anything out there, and I totally respect it. But but he's talking about the things, and I, I talked with him about this at the class. He's like, man, I don't know. And I'm like, dude, just keep doing what you're doing. Like, you're you're dropping these little knowledge bombs that normal people don't think about. Mm-hmm. Like, you being a pro for however long, and, and, like, you take this stuff for granted, like, just go through that. Like little things like like one on how to throw a floating worm. I learned a lot from that recently. Right. I don't throw floating worm enough. I didn't need to in Florida. Mm-hmm. I need to up here. Yeah, it's uh his Ned video cracked me up though. Uh, back to Dudley Channel. I don't know what's up with that, but Yeah. There's there's some little clickbait issue with Dudley there, but I don't think he's doing it. There's difference between him putting up this guy almost kills me in a bass boat and he's a hundred yards away versus no, no. him referring to they bought the Ned rig because it looks like goose poop. I I mean actually that's really not a bad theory. You know I don't eat I don't eat my own turds but I could see there being a high volume of protein in goose poop. I've seen the beer you drink though. So gosh damn, I'm not getting away from that. I'm not, I'm not gonna judge you. No, you're judging me. I'm judging the hell out of you. But you know what? You're my buddy, so I, I don't care. Uh, right. Me and Byron are similar. If we're not picking on you, we probably don't like you. So. We don't like you. Yeah. <laughs> if you can't take our shit, you probably up not hang around us much. I, as much as I give it out, I've learned to take it. And, dude, I make fun of myself as much as anybody. There's, but see, like, with Kevin and I, there's very few short jokes. Because we're kind of on that same level. Right. So, there's nothing we've not heard before. No. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we got the late series. It's fixing to come back June 10th. Yeah. And you know what? I'm excited. 
I'm gonna give Bass some major props, man. I I, I like the tournaments in the fall. Well, their 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 commitments, they're they're fulfilling all of their commitments, so they're still having all of those tournaments. They're gonna make them all up, and the places are going in the fall. I'm looking forward to seeing how all that works out. Maybe it, it could be a grind. Mm -hmm. It could be a slugfest. You don't know, but I like. The fact that these guys are going there when it may not be the key time of year. Yes. So it relates a little more to like the everyday fisherman. Right. Well, I always said, you know, I love ledge fishing. It's great. Uh, but there's so many damn Googans, and I don't mean the squad, I mean just morons that come out of the woodworks. As I say, when the, the, the woodwork uh, creeps. Um, the idiots yeah. come out, but for ledge season, I don't think you're highlighting Kentucky Lake at the best time. I want to see tour come here in middle of February, first of March, when it's a square bill, rattle trap, you know, swim bait bite, and these guys are busting out twenty four to twenty six pound bags of smallmouth, you know. Yeah. So Sean Meyer said he hates the net. I'm not a fan, but I throw it. But dude. Like, if you give it some time, it'll be a go-to bait of yours. It's stupid. Dude, there's some owls outside. I don't know if you hear this, but I've got my kids raising hell. I've got owls trying to mate outside here. And I live in the city, so I don't know what's going on. But, um, yeah. They're probably smelling that applesauce you got going on. <laughs> All right, bud. You know, I would, go, I would go get some different beer, but, you know, I like to... You know, I got a clean record. I try to, I don't drink and drive. That I'll, I'll tell you this. Um, you gonna back to your house from the shed? Uh, I, the bait room's connected to the house, but oh, that, no, good. the wife bought all the beer. Let's blame it on her. Nah, that's that's a low blow. She likes it. I'm gonna get me another. I'm gonna get me. Another. Oh, you gonna go get you something good? Okay. Oh, hold that thought. Hold that thought. Doug Stange. I don't catch up on a few comments real quick. It's good. It's good to be able to laugh at yourself because everyone else does. That's right. Yeah, Lake Fork in November. Um, guy who made that comment, Hunter, dude, I'm I'm looking forward to that man. Uh, MLF obviously caught kind of the tail end of the spawn there, but those fish are going to be fat in November. Can you imagine? giant top water plugs being thrown all over the place should be a really good grass trapping bite bladed jig uh sean i will tell you this is a true story a kid from murray state uh the murray state bass fishing team he caught a eight four on kentucky lake on a ned rig two years ago do big fish eat it yeah I just think you, if you're around small fish, you will catch the hell out of them. But big fish will eat it. If you get around a big fish, it'll eat it too. You'll catch a bunch of small ones. No, no. I, hey, Chris, Mick Ultra is not a real beer, but I've been on keto for two and a half years and lost a whole John Cruz. So if I'm going to drink beer versus bourbon... How, how much i know this is crazy how much weight have you lost byron i'm down like 50 something pounds so i got fat as hell i'm not gonna lie no i got i was a fat ass um i was over 200 pounds and now i'm down to 149 yeah so. i'm, I'm kind of holding steady here about 170 165 and i got up to 230 like yeah, when I started, I myself over two hundred, so like I, the, the number's not exactly clear, but I'm down to one forty nine, and I feel great. You look good, bud. Well, thank you. No homo, but no homo. Uh, here's the deal: when I started, of course, when you sell tackle and you sit in the office all day, and you don't bring your lunch to work, you buy McDonald's and Dairy Queen and all this shit, and you eat it every day. I just wasn't eating good, man. I used to work out. You can still, you can still eat from those places. Just tell them you want a triple cheeseburger, no bun, all the mayo, with bacon. 
Right. And that's like cheap, dirty keto. Or you can eat Vienna sausages or Spam or whatever. Mm hmm. You eat sardines? Keto. So there's no excuse, even if you're a road warrior, where you can't do keto. Yeah, I just quit. Number one, I don't very. I quit drinking about two years or, or year and a half ago, and I didn't drink a lot. Just, but two, I drink Mountain Dew. If I can kick Mountain Dew, uh, the only reason I really drink a lot of it is because caffeine, because it, it worked. But this week yeah, at work, drink, I'm not drink I'll one. I drink. Day, but I won't touch a soda like that. That I would probably die of a heart attack if I drank a Dr Pepper or Mountain Dew right now. Like I've, that's, I've that's went all Gatorade good. this week at work because it's hot as hell in there. The Gatorade Zero is good. We totally derailed from bait stuff, but yeah, dude, that's that's what we do. We don't have to always talk baits on here. All right. So what? All right. I asked. Uh, I asked this on the American Bait Works. You know, Net Bait's little live thing. What? We don't have an iCast this year. We're, we're, me and you, we are not going to get to hang out in Orlando. It's going to be a digital version. How do you feel about that? And is Missile Baits going to have a digital digitally new product coming out so and i'll drop this here no uh -oh. um we'll get this out of the way we're pretty good on social media i would like to think very good uh, very good and when your boss is the you know elder statesman of the elite series along with mark menendez mm -hmm. um He's in there. So, I mean, it's really easy to get good video out of him, and Shannon Wheeler does a great job. Mm -hmm. So, we are going to shoot a lot of the video and provide it to the guys that would normally come by the booth, like your tackle warehouse right. and so, so on and so forth. So, we've already been talking to a lot of these customers of ours, and we're going to shoot all that video and send it to them. So, it's going to be as if we were there as far as that goes. Um the one thing I'm missing out on, and John put it this way, it's like, man, you're really good at like just grabbing that guy that you don't know out of the aisle and selling him $2,500 of shit. That's the thing I'm going to miss out on. Yes. Which sucks. But I feel confident that we'll be, we will be able to get all of our information out there, you know, to the appropriate people. So what we're coming out with? No. Uh -oh. Bam. Uh, we've got a Ned Ball head. Ned Ball. It's a Ned head with a with a different style hook, but man, it pins them right in that meaty part of the jaw below the eye. And yeah. They do not get off. Ooh, I like it. I've got a couple prototypes. I can't show it to you, but I've got a couple prototypes um, that we've been fishing, and it freaking sticks them. And as far as Percy Priest goes, and if anybody's fished there, like, it is a Ned Rig killer. Like, I would say you get hung up one out of every two casts. The Ned Ball, you might get hung up one out of every eight. Really? So it comes through the rock better. It also can double as a finesse ball head. Um, green pumpkin, black, and unpainted for that purpose. 16th, 8th, and 316th sound sizes. Uh, and then we've got new colors in the D-Bomb coming, new colors in the baby D-Bomb. We've got six new colors in the 4.5 quiver, six new colors in the 6.5 quiver, and a few new colors in the Ned Bomb. That's coming out. So here's what I was going to say. So, um... I'll, I'll definitely be stocked up, but the one good thing about this thing being digital, I don't, one, I don't know the specifics. I don't know if the public's going to be able to do a tour and all that. I don't see why not. I mean, but. Well, I cast in really about the public. No, it's about the buyers, the wholesalers, the people that are stocking it on their shelves and trying to make some money. But what you're going to get, you're going to get some of these shops that normally they say, well, you know, we're out here and, you know, parts of Missouri or Arkansas or we're out west where it's not cost efficient for us to go out there and maybe they don't order a lot and they go they see this thing digitally and they get the tour and they they're, they're you're going to have some new people making orders because they get to see it quick and all that 
that normally would just wait for other places to get it and see if they like it first and go, oh, well, shit, that's cool. I'm, I'm glad I digitally toured the missile booth. I'm going to make an order. I love those colors. Yeah. I think you'll pick a little bit of that up. Now, yeah. Just like I said, the one downside is not meeting the people you don't know. Um, but the people we do know, we're good. So, and I've already had dealers picking up all the new stuff, and it's not starting to ship till the end of June. Yeah. But I mean, you know, there's a lot of a lot of good customers of ours that have already placed their orders. So, and it'll all be, you know, it'll be all over the internet. We're gonna tease it. You know, like we did with the quiver and all that kind of stuff. So, the the quiver. Yeah, Speed pumpkin is the color on Percy Priest. Now, don't be afraid to play with a trailer. So, like I've been throwing the green pumpkin micro football, but throwing an El Diablo baby D bomb. I I caught a fish uh, a week or two ago that had a couple of antennas sticking out of its mouth. Right. Mm hmm. Hadn't done this yet on Priest, but I took my pliers and I pulled that sucker out. And it was the coolest shade of green pumpkin with some bright orange highlights. Really? And this was two weeks ago. So you, you make that change, and that's that kind of made sense to me because the El Diablo's got kind of the yellowy orange with the black and red and all that. Um, but, like, matching the hats, it's perfect. So, I mean, it, it makes sense why they're eating the heck out of that micro football. You know, I went out with Jake Lawrence uh, last summer. It was like July. And the video was on YouTube, and he was catching them shallow on a Nico rig. And then he, he caught a bass that spit up a crawfish, and it was a perfect match to that green pumpkin, orange flake, Yamamoto color. And you yeah. think, well, this is in the summer. You know, guys aren't throwing orange jigs or red crankbaits. But those crawfish and those creeks... Two of them we caught, spit them out, the pinchers, and they were just, they looked like this orange crush. I mean, they were red as can be. Yeah. And I, I really think, I'm not a biologist, but I think the crawfish colors, not only do they variation by region you're in and lake, but parts of your lake and where the bottom composition is different, if you're around a lot of rock or if you're around a lot of mud, it, changes them up quite a bit so that's one reason to keep a variety of colors in your boat i mean you can get bit on green pumpkin anywhere in the country oh yeah so so steve hardly just to address his comment um so john's designed a ton of baits for spro and that's a really good relationship and have been very successful right for all of us so I don't see missile coming out with hard baits anytime soon, just to give you a little insight on that. But I do know that, uh, oh, K Pink, what's his name? Kevin Short. Yes, Kevin Short had a bunch of the Ed Chambers crankbaits. Sold them like that. They're gone. I, I assume they'd be gone in a couple of hours, but that was a couple of days ago. Yeah, they were gone quick. Um, I was actually looking some before I got on here on on eBay. Um, I think Black Label. I need to get some. They've got uh, you know, Cliff Pace's bait. They've got a hickey and a mutt now. I mean, it looks dead nuts to it. I need to get get some. Um, I'm getting laid in and on this balsa game, man. I only threw a few when I was kind of growing up and whatnot. And now I'm missing out. I'm trying to build a collection. One, to collect, and two, I fish them, man. I'm not going to buy anything I don't feel confident going down a pig gravel bank in the spring or fall throwing. Here's something else, though, too. Like, when you pay that inflated price for that crankbait, you don't need to buy something you can't afford to lose. That's right. Unless you're just the guy that's hoping that they go up to five hundred dollars a piece in twenty years and pay your college tuition but for your kids, you're not fishing with those. So, like, and I'm going to throw this back to the swim bait part of it. So, like, as I've gotten into the, throwing the bigger baits, you know, like, oh man, that's twenty five dollars. Well, hell, that's cheap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like, try throwing this depth two fifty up in that treetop. You know. Mm-hmm. 
to doing something like that. But I mean, if you, and I, I think it was Mike Gilbert that said it, but if you're cashing that thing out there worried about losing it, don't even throw it. Dude, that goes with any bait. You know, people rag on me. You know, I, I throw the hell out 8XD, 10XD, 6 cents, clouds. And people are like, well, what kind of hooks do you put on? What split rings? And I'm like, dude, I leave them stock. And they're like, stock? I'm like, yeah, because I break them off all the time. Well, I put another $4 into a crankbait when I know I'm throwing them in this. Yeah. I'm throwing them in the stuff where it gets hung up. And yeah. I just seem to break them off and keep going. Here's the deal about crankbaits. If your hooks are not dug into the bait, and a lot of times people don't realize crankbaits get hung, the lip gets hung or the line wraps. If you break it off, it's some bitch floats back to the surface. Yeah. Is that a Fritz hook? No, nah, dude. This is an 8XD, man. It is the back. Other than your face. I wish I could see something. Oh, yeah. You're, you're seeing my uh, Skype. So I have to hold it down here. No, it's an 8XD. It's the bastard stepchild of all the XD baits from Strike King. For some reason, yeah, people, can, people don't yeah, like it. I'll put a Strike King back here. Like, all time. I got the uh, the new Bass Mafia. I finally got a cranking coffin the other day, and I was able to put my 5, 6, and five, six and 8 in the same box. Yeah, you can't do a 10. And you, no, can't, you, can't, do a, you can't do the big 6 cents either. Or the, That's my, my Tackle Warehouse wish list I've got because my birthday's coming up. Uh -oh. So, trick for you married dudes, if you if you tell your family, friends, whatever, like when they ask what you want for your birthday, you tell them tackle warehouse or equivalent gift cards only. Mm -hmm. And that way you have to spend that money on tackle. That's right. So I figure I've got like $350 worth of gift cards coming that I have to spend on tackle at the end of the month. So my plan is to get a bunch of the, the new Bass Mafia. It's the uh, the red one, the new one. Mm-hmm. The Gen Two. Um, I've got some like these right here. It's not the casket; it's a coffin. Is it the hard one? It's the that one. Dude, I like. So this is my flat side. I'm fixing to have to go to a flat side 2.0 box. Cause I'm gonna, I'll put these Craig Powers baits in there, and it's gonna, it's gonna take up a big room. Yes, I like these a lot. Yeah. Uh, now, do you got any of those lure like boxes? No, I'm not big on the glue on the bottom. My deal is, look, man, I've got this is just a flat side box. Look at all this shit I got packed in here. Why would I want a box where I can only put twelve crank baits in it? But, like, and then not be able to get it off the box. Right. And I know they say that plastic don't... Stuck in there. Like, that's just kind of gross to me, so... Yeah, I mean, I dip. You know, I'll probably spill spill some grizzly in there. I don't want it stuck in the plastic. That's not a bad idea for you, though. So, like, if you do spill several cans of dip and you're running low, you could always go to your lure lock boxes for, like, that... Farm it out? Yeah. That panic pinch. Yeah. Dude, I've I've had mm, I've had some days on the water where I've ran out back when I had my skeeter, and man, I might have had a couple of dips of skull peach that were fermented. It was bad. So skull peach and apple beer, like I'm seeing a pattern. Dude, don't hate on the skull peach, man. My fishing partner, that's all he dips, and he's a freaking hammer. So now you can make fun of me because I'm not a hammer. Uh, like I don't even have a comment for that. Like, I'm going to let these comments take care of the comments. But I'm on the welfare bear now. The grizzly yeah. wintergreen. It, well, I'll tell you what. This is more expensive than skull now. So that tears up your mouth way less than Kodiak that I used to dip. Dude, years. Kodiak would... I'd put a pinch of Kodiak. You know, Ronnie that ran the cabin, and he quit yeah. dipping. One of the best people on earth. You know, I'd work for him. I'd run out of debt. Ryan said, oh, here's you some Kodiak. And in about 10 minutes, I'm like, holy shit, I'm drunk. I'm like, how do you of do this? It's a deal. Like, and, and I don't I don't advocate dipping. Like, no. Do, do not ever start. It is the worst thing you could ever do. And it is the hardest thing to quit that you will ever face. Like, right. You could quit. You could quit touching Ooh. yourself easier or whatever. I mean, I don't, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's really a easier than putting dip. You know what I mean? Oh, like, shit. It sucks. 
All right. So when you order from Tack Warehouse, what is stuff you order other other than tackle storage? Yeah, I'm changing the sub subject. Okay. It's hard for me. Anyway, uh, yeah. I don't want to talk about dip because I, I am trying to quit. I, I went from a can a day to do maybe a half can, and most of it's from eight to when I go to bed. You know. So try the Zen pouches. They're tobacco free. It's nicotine. I put two of them in there, and you're good to go. Anyway. So what what else do you buy from Tackle Warehouse? What other than swim? Okay, I know you got swim baits growing out the ears, but so, you know what? The best swim baits you can't buy at Tackle Warehouse usually. It's uh the handmade. In my defense, in my defense, I was a a gun nut for about four or five years. Had all kinds of stuff. Hell, I've got short barrel shotguns and silencers and short barrel rifles and taken nine or ten tactical training classes and all that kind of stuff. So I had amassed this collection of guns, and then it dawned on me, like, man, I sell fishing lures from home. Like, I'm not kicking indoors. Right. I'm not, you know, the the Overwatch guy on the, the rooftop Korean, you know what I mean? So I could sell a lot of these guns and buy a lot of badass swim baits. And that's so that's right. what I did over the winter. So I sold I sold a handful of guns, and I've got I've got a fairly decent swim bait collection now, and it's been it's been paying off. I still haven't had time to throw all of them, but I'd say I'm pretty well rounded. Um, but I buy a lot of my stuff from Tackle Warehouse, and I try not to to put all my eggs in that one basket. Just I don't like to, and, and, and we'll get tackle industry real for you right now. All right, let's go. Let's get let's get get real. So, I sell to independent dealers. That's what yeah. feeds my family. Absolutely. And so you won't see me posting about one particular like you won't see me tagging tackle warehouse and a bunch of stuff. Right, or absolutely. Dealers, for that matter, because it's my job to stay neutral. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, but there's a lot of good relationships that I have that, that take good care of me just because I've known them for 15 years. Absolutely, man. I'm so, like that too. You know, I had like Ben from the Hookup Tackle on podcast. Awesome dude. That guy, JDM Bates, man, that's the guy if you got a question you go to. He doesn't carry missile, and I don't fault him for it because his business model is so JDM heavy. That dude goes to Japan eight times a year mm -hmm. just to stay up on the newest and the best stuff. Like Mega Bass showed up at his place. They like, didn't show up, but like they came to his shop and built a Mega Bass store within his store. Yeah, they and do. they have to buy back Mega Bass product from him when Mega Bass runs out. Mm -hmm. like, That's smart business is what it is. Like, for interviews and blog articles I've written for Missile, and like Ben's the dude, and and I hope that he gets into more like domestic tackle at some point because I know he'd sell the heck out of Missile. Right. You know, it, I totally understand his business model. Like, man, if that's working for you, roll with it. Like, own your piece. And like somebody said in the comments here, like that's what Missile's doing. Like, we're good at soft plastics, and that's not being cocky, but like. Y'all make good shit, period. We want to be the best at what we do. Look, so you're not going to see us dabble in salt water or crappie or panfish or crankbaits or whatever. Like, we want to be the go-to company for soft plastic. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I mean, I'll just put, put it out here. Six cents, man. You know what they're, they're known for is their hard baits. Now they've gotten into soft plastics, and they're doing really well. I like their soft plastics a lot, definitely in my rotation. But yeah. most guys, when you hear six cents, they're like square bill, crankbait, you know, that's what they're thinking of. And uh, I guess it all depends, too, on your goals as a company. But I see a lot of startup companies, man. And we've talked about this before, private messages and whatever. They want to do everything. They want they want crankbait, spinnerbait, soft plastic, crappie, all that. And I'm, get you an audience and a following for what one thing you're really good at. Look. I'll be I'll be real with you, and of course I've been drinking, but 
Uh, you know, Jinko is a local company, and I, I have nothing negative about those guys, man. Um, but I just felt, man, they've really tried to do too much at one time. But what they're really good at is crappie baits, man. Their crappie baits are really, really good. And I feel if they could stick on that part and then maybe phase it. I'm not saying phase out, but not put so much emphasis on trying to be the next pure fishing or six cents or whatnot. If you, that crappie market's huge, man, I'm telling you. It is, and like Strike King is big enough to play with that. Yes. But missile, like none of us. Pro- I mean, well, we might crappie fish. I don't crappie fish. John fishes the Elite Series. Like none of us are Wally Marshall. Okay, so, like, I'll let Wally Marshall do what he does, and we'll do what we do. It's kind of mm. kind of hard thought process. Yeah, I just, you know, you got pure fishing. Sh- a bunch of stuff we're not good at. We want to be great in the thing we, we do. You know what I mean? Yeah, and the first missile bait I ever bought was a D-bomb, and I went fishing with, uh, <laughs> that's a hilarious comment, Cole. Uh, the first bait I ever threw was a D-bomb, Green Pumpkin, with Ben Parker. I'm going to go fish with Ben Parker. I think we're going to throw some Magnum Spoon. He said, nah, man, they're, they're just not out there. Let's go flipping. He spanked him. And what he was doing, he showed me the trick. He cut the little side tails off, and he didn't cut, you know, split it down the middle. He would flip it. And he basically flip it in there, shake it one, two, three times, and then he would just reel it and two or three pumps out of the bush did you know how many fish bit that bait five feet away from the bush while he was swimming probably about 90 percent of what he caught and said dude this thing swims awesome yeah, and got, that's why i cut the, the little legs off the side of the micro jig for the baby d-bomb as a trailer like trim the sides cut the, cut the little legs off but those legs they I mean they go nuts and I know saying it works bigger than a pocket crawl is aggressive, but it's it's got a ton of action. Yeah. And I, I mean, I've gotten bit swimming it back to the boat, you know, or when you're done with your cast or whatever. Uh, what a uh, very underrated missile bait. I might say maybe the most, the destroyer. Man, it, it it's is. a really big creature bait. The big one is. It's a the seven inch destroyer. So like. John did a thing recently on like bed fishing with that. You got any of those baits? Someone asked. Show us what you're talking about. Yeah, I got you. I mean, you're a pretty sexy guy, you know, no homo, but this is about the baits. Hold up, let me get one. Thanks, Chad Zone. We had we had a well, bud. We don't need no nut sack in there. I gotta dig him out of the boat. Okay. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to take me a, a relief. We're gonna take a break. He's gonna get those baits. I'm gonna relieve myself and get me another beer. So the bass mafia bag. Awesome. So the destroyer. That's our seven inch creature bait. But that's, so like anywhere you throw a brush hog or something like that, this isn't slender like a brush hog. It's got the D-bomb style body with the ribs, the longer little tails here, and then the twin, the twin tails at the bottom. But he's right, that's a big bait, but pitching this thing, casting it around, um, it's, you know, brush hog-esque, as the guy said, but it is a, uh, it is a different bait as far as the ribs go in the fall and all that kind of stuff. I feel I get a better hookup ratio with the rib baits like this because that hook point's hiding between the ribs, and it's, it's just instant, so... Now the baby D bomb, I throw that a lot more than the big, or excuse me, the, the baby destroyer. I throw it a lot more 
um, on a Carolina rig. The uh, the full size destroyer works really good on swing heads, on ledges, um, around rock, and stuff like that. And uh, for pitching, you can bed fish with it if they're eating a big bait. If not, then just go down and throw a baby deep or something. Like that. Yeah, I did a live stream on Facebook a couple years ago, and I think it's on my YouTube page. I uploaded it. Is John came on and talked cranking, and the destroyer was brought up, and he went into the whole deal of fishing the prototypes and Ish Monroe bumming a bunch, and his color was green pumpkin flash. And he said well, that's, that's his favorite. Especially in the spring, but he throws green pumpkin flash everywhere, and it it does do really really well on Gunnersville. I don't care what bait it is, green pumpkin flash does well on Gunnersville. You know that's a big Texas color, like Casey Six Cents. That green pumpkin magic, green pumpkin flash, they those fish really like it. Yeah. So I'll compare the the baby destroyer to the. Size destroyer. And by the way, you, you don't have to go to Tackle Warehouse to buy missile baits. You can go to their website, um, you, and they you ship. Can go to our website, like I said, I'm, I'm trying to. I'm not trying to pimp one person up, you know, more than the other. I, I I don't even know how we got here. All of a sudden, he just said, "Let's get get it on him." We, we got Byron on here, so. All right. So here's I'll do a size comparison. So that's the full size destroyer. That's the baby destroyer. And you can also, if you like to punch, you can take those big tails off, and that's a hell of a punch of bait. It's almost like the gambler cricket. Man, if I was going to do that, then the gambler cricket is a great bait. I'm just saying, if you're out there and you're like, shit, I need to punch, and I ain't got no punching baits, you can make one out of it. You, you could, like if you ran out of everything else, you could do that, but like I'm pitching the full size, or throwing it on a bed, maybe a Carolina rig if you're in that part of the country, but where I'm at in middle Tennessee, like I throw this on a swing head, mm -hmm. both on a swing head, but like this on a Carolina rig is deadly. Yeah, man, uh, I, I used to lizard, Carolina rig a lizard. And now I'm basically a Cinco or a Creature Bait on Carolina Rig. Yeah. And if they're really stupid... I haven't got into that yet, but a lot of people catch, you know, some good fish on a Carolina Rig with our Crawfather. I just hadn't spent enough time with it yet. Dude, Crawfather is nasty, man. I love that on finesse jigs. It, it, it's got the right action. Del Hollow, I know you've been fishing Del Hollow. Yeah. So I went up there... You better get your Ned Rig rod out. Yeah, so I went up there, never been there, and of course the guy I go with, his name's Hunter Mills, he's a great, great fisherman, young guy, he made the top 15th Coastal Championship, and uh, we're, we just start scanning like we're on Kentucky Lake, he's like, there's three of them right there, and I said, all right, and I threw that Kitek out there with that crawfather, and this is the first 10 minutes, I'm dragging it real slow, and all of a sudden, thunk, and that's all I caught for two days, was that one. Oh yeah, they're eating. They're eating a baby destroyer on a Carolina rig on the flats on Del Hollow right now. Uh, Chad Zone says, "Show us how you rig the micro jig." Man, gotta get one. Uh oh. Um. So what I do is I I pre-cut my trailers. Now you guys might not have as much time as I do working from home, talking on the phone to tackle dealers, but I'll take a bag of baby D bombs and I will sit at my desk and cut them in half and then trim the sides up. That's just my preference. Some guys don't cut the legs off. That way it's just a little, you know, to strip mm -hmm. with the leg. And so I've got those preloaded in the boat. And if you fish with me and you're like, Oh man, I ate my trailer. I throw you that bag. You're like, Oh man, that's awesome. You just saved me like five minutes. Yeah. People don't think about that until they need a new trailer on the water. Uh, let me uh, let me grab my my box. Uh, uh, see, I like this, guys. I'm usually in the panic mode, pulling baits here, doing this. Got scissors over there, about to cut my neck off, and now I just get Byron doing it. 
his wife's going to be like, what in the hell were you doing out there in that garage for so long? Oh, dude, I've got the door locked so she can't come out here. <laughs> All right, so icebox. Dude, that icebox is the deal. Well, like, if you can see, I don't want to dump these out, but, like, that's, that's a micro jig box right there. Yeah, that's a lot better than mine. So you take, here's one rig, that'll work. So that's the dill pickle. And so that's how I cut the baby D-bomb. So you almost got, ooh, I like that. So it's half of it. You cut it there. It, it, see, what? how I do it is I take... I take the skirt, see how long that goes, mm -hmm. and I want this to be below the skirt. I like that. That's so that, but like trimming the sides to me makes a difference. So like you cut the side pinchers off, you cut it in half, and then you trim the side mm -hmm. where it still makes a good jig chunk. After everything's said and done, like that's sexy. I'm checking out mine. I could probably have to trim that. That's the Kitek. That ain't no good. It is good. But I throw it on. I throw it on the Cashin Micro Jig Rod. It's the John Curry Signature Series. Blah blah blah. But man, there's something to it. It works. It's got plenty of backbone with a fast tip. And on these, I put the weed guards in all of mine just because of where we live. Right. Um. So you get two per package when I get them in. Like. I got a I got a box in from from the office the other day and hell I glued in 98 weed guards you know just knock them out in one time. <clears throat> but I mean where I'm fishing you need it. I uh you know I'm pretty notorious throwing that football jig here the the old Moina Rock jig with no weed guard. Hey I got uh I've got one of those Ike's headbanger jigs that freaking dude yeah. has got a hook in it man. It's got a good hook in it. It's a, it's a lighter wire hook. I like that, um, though. But it's good because, I mean, when you're throwing that football jig on a long cast, you don't want a flipping hook on there. Yeah, um, I get in this debate all the time, man. I see these companies come out, check out our, our football jig, and we've got the triple X tuna hook. And I'm like, dude, you don't need that shit. You just need a medium to light wire, super needle point hook. And you don't have to have flipping sticks to throw football jigs on. Uh, that's just me. Carolina rig and Tom, I'm trying to look through the comments to not ignore them, but my favorite be D bomb or my favorite beaver is the D bomb. Uh, bomb shot is the deal for drop shot. Yeah, it is. I got one right here, and I actually throw this color quite a bit. And it would be uh, well, no, this is the Ned bomb. My bad. This is my oh. favorite Ned bomb color. Is dude, the Alabama? Too. Yeah, you can drop shot it. That's what's cool, dude. I'm gonna tell you that quiver is gonna be an excellent Tennessee River drop shot bait. Like, like, like man size. Yes, drop shot bait. man size power shot. You know, power shot. There's so a Frankie. Uh, I'm not gonna try your last name. The third, uh, poor guys with a kid. I've got two kids. And missile baits retail the majority of them for three ninety nine. So we could have gone up in price over the years. We don't. We're everything we do is made in the USA, and we try to keep it affordable for people that appreciate that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, so that's a big deal right now too, with all the sea okay. void stuff going on. There's a lot of guys looking to support these American company, and so, uh, y'all been doing it for a long time. Jigs, all of our jigs are made in Arkansas. For us, all of our plastics come out of Georgia. So we never had any slowdown or kind of production issues. So we gained a bunch of market share in the month of April just because we had product and we were able to ship. You know what I mean? But like other companies that you're very fond of get all their stuff from China and they're kind of in a bind. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like missile baits, we got you. Like, you know, we've got everything made in the U.S. by Americans, and we're shipping every day. Like, these dealers give us an order on a Tuesday. It goes out Tuesday afternoon. Oh, Chris Adams, 
there's one you definitely don't hear about. He says the Fuse 4-4 four four is a phenomenal bait. Don't hear much about it. We discontinued those. Oh, Chris, you better be buying them. That's all I got to say. We discontinued them. Um, it's a great bait, but they weren't selling. So, I mean, Missile made a few cuts this year for the first time just to make room in our warehouse for, like, all the new stuff we were coming out with. It's a necessary evil. So that goes back to what people always say. Man, how come Zoom discontinued that bait? Or how come Strike King quit making a wake shad? It may be really popular in one or two pockets of the country. But if, when you got a big national company, if it's not a national seller, sometimes you just got to call it out. And it sucks, man. I mean, hey, Six Cents has called some colors and baits that I like. But I might be the only guy in 100 miles that even throws it. So it sucks, and there's that's always going to happen, no matter what company. But um, that's just something that you know a lot of people don't understand. Well, so, like, Missile had never discontinued anything um, until this past year. And so at the end of 19, we're looking at it. And, and I, you know, ran a report, and I'm like, man, these just aren't selling. Um, you know, and, and without fail, when you discontinue something like that, like, man, that's my favorite bait, you know. Well, mine too, but you can't, you, you, you know, you can't tie up that shelf space just because I like the green beret color and the fuse. And I've got, I've got, and if you guys need fuses and you're desperate, I've got a bunch back here because I throw that bait a lot. So hit me up. Facebook, Instagram, whatever. Byron Childers. He also has the best bass boat pictures ever. I do. You're going to met. I've been waiting on that one all night because you, you mess with my beer, but you make some great bass boat pictures. You're a dick. But it, it's, no, that's cool because Kevin gives me a hard time. So I'm not fishing the pro tour, right? So I'm, I'm on the Skeeter memo team. Right. So, I mean, you're doing it for the right reason. You're not just out there. I'm the Pro Tour, and I want to be the best representative for Skeeter that I can be. And, you know, Missile Baits has, you know, everything to do with that. And I take a lot of dealers fishing and a lot of people fishing, and everybody that rides in this boat is like, oh, my God, especially the FXR. Like, I will trim it up, and we go over a boat wake, and they white knuckle, and they're like, you know, they're like, holy shit. Like, that was nothing. You know what I mean? Like, it's mm. a it's a badass boat. Uh, but I do take a lot of pictures of the boat to post on Facebook and Instagram because I feel I need to do my part because I'm not a Mark Menendez. Right. Or, but know, it, but like, even Mark still does that stuff. Or whatever. Yeah. So Kevin likes to give me hell for it, and I'm cool with it. But, you know, I was a Skeeter guy, and I'll be honest, Byron, you know, if I can hit that 30,000 subs and do a living, on, you know, on YouTube, which it probably never happened, but we'll see. We'll see what the future holds. So, like, the creek fishing guy, um, I was told some numbers the other day about YouTube that would blow your mind. I'll probably like, know. Like, you need to start catching, like, warmouth and rock bass in the creek, mm -hmm. and you'll make, like, 10 grand what? Yeah. It's true. Bluegill videos is where it's at, bud. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Bring me the red ear holes. Uh, I just, man, you know, you know what I'm about. I'm not going to go do a bunch of crazy stuff. Yeah, man, I wouldn't want you. I would think different of you if you compromised what what makes you good. And I don't mind, you know. Hey, I don't mind going catching some red ear. Hell, I did some bow fishing. I love to kill shit. You know, I got to take out them carp one way. Might as well film it. Uh, but. Um, you I've always said they should have a shotgun season for Asian carp. They should. All right, Austin wants you to explain how boat deals work. You you kind of tell tell them. It, do it where it's not. You don't don't put numbers out there. Just you no. Know, nah. There's a lot of people who get memo deals, and people don't understand what a memo deal is. So man, I'll I'll be I'll be real because I feel like I can do that on Kevin's channel because um, not very many people watch it. So, <laughs> Oh, my God. All right, dude, um, I'm, fixing to, <laughs> I'm fixing to get the hell out of here. 
so it shouldn't, it shouldn't have too much blowback. Um, so I've been in the industry for 15 years selling tackle. I was with Gambler for 13 years. I've been with Missile for two years. Um, and I called up uh, Ryan Greer at Open Season Sports and Marine. Great dude. Yes. I've known Ryan for forever. And um, I'm like, dude, keep an eye out for a good used Skeeter Express, you know, whatever. I, I need a I need a bass boat. Like, I'm, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. Again. And I had a Ranger back in the day and sold it before I left Florida and moved and got married and had kids and built a house and all that kind of stuff. So, But I was ready for it. And uh, he's like, I got you. So then he calls me back three weeks later, and he's like, dude, welcome to Team Skeeter. And I'm like, what? No. I, no. There ain't no way I'm going to do that. Like, you know, he's like, no, 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 just just call. So uh, I talked I talk to the lady at Skeeter, and um, so the way the memo deal works, and the reason that happened is because, and I don't want to sound like a turd here, but I've got longevity in the industry. And I know a whole lot of people. And I can put a lot of butts in this seat. And I'm a sales guy. That's right. So, but I don't want to be like that crappy car salesman sales guy. Like, I'd rather take you fishing and not say a word. And then when we do that, you're going to be like, man, my next book's going to be a Skeeter FXR. I don't have to say a word. But that that's kind of... You know, that, I mean, that's what I do. And same thing with missile. Like, we go out and you can throw Guggen all you want or whatever bait you, you want to do. I, I like to pick on Guggen because Kevin does. But No, we uh, all like to pick on Guggen because, for the most part, they're D-bags. Okay, you said it, but I'm trying to remain. You, I don't have a job in the industry, bud. I'm building windows for a living. <laughs> There's, you said it. So, um, you know, we go out and throw missile. You catch a bunch of fish. You're like, man, I'm going to buy more of that. So that, that's, that's kind of my job. But so with the boat deal, how my deal works, um, they give you a discount on the boat. And I've got 12 months to pay that note. Right. And so what I do I'm not trying to make a bunch, and this is a lot of the, you know, a lot of the pros have the same deal. I'm not trying to make a bunch of money because I could not afford this boat. No, you just want a boat to fish out of. So when it comes, I'm, I'm just wanting a boat to fish out of, and I'm, I'm very, very blessed that I've got the newest and best of the best, you know, every year, as long as somebody buys it. You know That's what right. Mean? So I don't fuck it up at all. So like this boat, I'm selling for sixty-eight thousand. That's what the memo's for. I'm not making a dime. Like it, that covers batteries. Okay, right. I added five hundred dollars to the battery. But I mean, it's fully loaded. It's got the twin power pole blades, that was jack plate, fully padded front deck, stereo. Solixes is an upgrade on the on this year's boat. They went with Helixes. Um, if and it'll have under 50 hours on it when I'm done, you know? So that's, in a nutshell, how that works. But, I mean, I, I got the boat deal because of my position in the industry. Um, so you had to, you, you, you used that little bit of flex. You flexed on a little bit. I mean, I've got some info. Well, I want you, though. I'm not trying to, I'm not, I'm not, I mean, here's the deal, dude. Byron, and, and I'm not trying to be ego guy because I've been very humble, but you know how much shit I was selling online and everything. And, and dude, I'm not a Luke Duncan. I'm not a Bass Talk Live and all that. And I see their numbers on their streams and their stuff. And I'm like, dude, my numbers are just as good, if not better. And they, they're getting power poles. They're getting all these sponsorships. And I'm like, dude, all I want is a freaking kayak right now. I can't even get a kayak. But uh, I just don't want to shoot that's it. That's why I make all the posts I do, and, and I try to do everything I can from where I'm at. Because do I feel I deserve this deal? Not at all. 
Do I understand why it was afforded to me? Not at all. But I am very, very thankful, and I want to to do everything that I can to promote Skeeter and Yamaha and you know all that, and and sell as many boats from as possible. And and it, I mean, I've had two or three guys that I knew in Florida years back that were like, "Man, I want to buy your boat." I'm like, "Man, this one's already sold." But Ryan at Open Season Sports Marine has one. Right. Right. I've sold two boats from him. In Camden, Tennessee, dude drove up from South Florida to buy. Yeah, man. Open season. They're not the biggest boat dealership ever. They're but Ron has good deals and great customer service. Yes. And, and uh fuck straight with you, which is my kind of business. Like, there's no fluff. There's no BS. There's no car salesman. There's no pressure. He's like, man, here's my price. Here's your price. We can have whatever you want. We can service it all here, and we're done. You know. Yeah, he man. He sells a lot of boats. He does. Uh, I got to answer a few questions here. What was Old Toad? He's a good dude, man. He always sends me ten dollars to make me holler for some beer or whatever. Uh, what was the weight on the micro jig? What weight are you using on the micro jig? Three eighths. We make quarter and three eighths. And on, and I'll tell you from my perspective um i like the quarter on percy priest because it doesn't get hung up as much in the rock like percy if you hadn't fished percy priest it is all rock like if you haven't seen rock you've seen every rock fishing percy priest so the quarter ounce comes through a lot better than the three eighths um from like 10 foot and less i haven't thrown the three eighths as much yet because i haven't needed to but I'm looking forward to throwing that on the ledges and stuff come post-spawn, summer, and all that kind of stuff. Like, you get out in that 15, 20 foot, that 3 eighths is going to be the deal. Uh, Vincent says, can you use a micro jig on a spinning reel or only a bait caster? Dude, spinning, that micro jig's great That's for a spinning reel. Use it on. So I throw, I've got a, uh, I've got the Cashin, Micro jig rod, which is the John Cruz signature series. If you, if you, if if our boy Paul Benson watches this, we we put some cashing plugs in here. I've done, I've done my work, right? We've done our work, and I'm not even sponsored by him, but I've done my work. Uh, yeah, I'm not. Whatever. So <laughs> I throw a Daiwa. I throw a Daiwa Tatula LT three thousand on all my spinning rods. And I throw the 12-pound Sunline SX-1 braid. I tie an FG knot to 8-pound sniper floor carbon. That's sure. my setup for the five spinning rods that I own. Um, but that's that's my micro jig setup specifically. I, I want I want zero to 25 feet. I'm gonna give a plug in here. They don't. You know, Dawa's going to hook me up with some reels after all this COVID stuff because California's governor is going crazy. Um, it's, your, your governor's going crazy. Andy Bashir's, in the words of Eric Cartman, can suck my balls. Anyway. Yeah. He's got a massive heart on for us Tennesseans. Yeah, and there's less people with COVID in Tennessee than Kentucky. Anyway, dude, I've got this is the 3,000. To Tula LT spin reel, and yep. you know me, I'm Kentucky Lake guy. We're just now getting into spinning rods, dude. This some bitch right here is light as a stratic, amazing drag. I love the handle on it. I'm gonna buy me. I'm gonna buy me another spinning setup. Gonna have another one of these. But what I like is, dude, you can pull on this thing and right. You'll see some spinning reels. They'll flex right here. This some it don't flex. It's I've got five of them. I throw them all the time. Never had a single issue. I mean, and I'm from Florida. So mm -hmm. For me to own five spinning rods, period, is a big deal. Yeah. Um, but you moved to Tennessee, and you better you better have a few. You know, it's crazy, dude. That the whole spinning rod thing, and I'll I'll, I'll give some credit to Brett Hot man when he started catching him on that cut tail and the Nico rig. People started buying when I was you know, running the tackle shops and running to the cabin. You'd sell some spinning rods, you know, but you didn't sell 
what the guys do now. Guys now come in looking for specific technique spinning rods. They used to just yeah. come in and buy one. They might throw a tube or a drop shot, and that's all you had to carry. Now, if you need a spinning rod, you can throw a Nico rig on. You can throw a drop shot. You can throw a net on. They just, Cashin just came. I don't even have a reel for this yet. That's upside down, but it's the spin bait rod. Right. Uh, so that's the one I looked at at the Classic. That's a sweet rod. This is my sixth spinning rod that I don't, it's never been thrown. I don't have a reel for it yet, but it's a 7.6 fast medium. 16 to 3 8 shots, but it's it's John designed this for the Spin John 80, this pro. Um, I have thrown it, I take that back, I have thrown it, but I don't carry it in the boat because I don't throw a spy bait a whole lot just yet. I probably should, but I have. Yeah, I, um, I'm not on that spy bait train, bud. I've got one. I feel I like that's a niche deal. Mm-hmm. The spin johns, they're a little bigger. Not to make this a spro commercial. That's okay, dude. Spro look, look look behind me. Look at these little John DDs, man. That's like, a super DD. Here, here's what we'll do, because other people can't do this, right? So I'll compare side by side the duo realis to the spin john. So you've got the Duo Realis. All right, so on that spin, John, above the nose, below the nose, there's a, it looks like a little plane. Does that keep yeah, that bait there's from... There's a little cup that causes that thing to wobble left and right, even at slow speeds. And then you've got a swivel on the front where there's no swivel on this one. And you've got a swivel on the back where there's no swivel on this one. So, not that the Spro is a knockoff, but it's a much improved design. So, it's like, a, this is the original, and it will catch fish. I've, I own plenty of them. I've caught fish on them. But the Spro, it's weighted a little different. It's got, I mean, you know it's got Gamagatsu hooks on it. They come with, you know, each different color has a different kind of tail feather. Like, this one's got that little flash of on there. Um, but with the, with the, uh, swivels on there, it's a, it's a different bait. I mean, same application, you know. I'm going to put I, you on the spot, Byron. We just got a $20 donation from Ken Hardy. All right. Nice. He says, bait man, I need a rod for swim jig. I mostly throw a three eighths divines with divine trailer and need a flipping pitching rod. If possible, $200 price point. Love the channel. Come here for info. So that's the only size swim jig I throw is a three eighths. Um, personally, I've been throwing mine on the six inch sensory, but that's a two hundred forty dollar rod. Um, I'm not the greatest swim jig fisherman, but I feel like a seven one to seven two medium heavy can pretty much get it done. What what's cashing got in that lineup? Under two hundred bucks for a swim jig. So the majority of the elite series rods. Um, are in that $200 price point. Um, for a swim jig, I would throw, and this is like the one part number I know because I own three of these rods. It's the F9047B. And so you could throw a swim jig on that. You could throw a big spinner bait on that. You can throw the dark sleeper on that. You could throw a chatter bait on that. Like, it's, it's, one, uh, well, hell, it's probably the most versatile rod that Cashin makes. Uh, but that's what I throw my swim jigs on. So, I don't know about how Cashin numbers of rods. Like, you know, like Dobbins. It's confusing. Like, if I was throwing Dobbins, it'd be like a 734. You know, that's an yeah. all-purpose rod. It's got good backbone. But you want some tip on a swim jig because, number one, uh, a lot of times I'm skipping it in... Uh, I want some, but I gotta have backbone for the hook set. But you don't want a super stiff rod. You want them to kind of be, basically, you want just a one power above spinnerbait rod for a swim jig. That's how I feel it. But 
I like more of a parabolic bend. Right. You you want it to have some flex. Yeah. And I think people sometimes get confused. Well, it's parabolic. It's not got backbone. Well, that's false. That's you can have backbone in a parabolic rod. Um, For sure. And if a swim jig, you don't have to spend $500. You don't need an NRX 854, which is a great-ass rod. Super sensitive. But I, mean, I'm, I'm like, I like the cashins. Um, for my for my cashins, like my top water rod that you asked about earlier, I don't throw enough pop bars and little baits like that. Top water, I throw a lot of spooks, like the big ones. Right. Spooks. I throw uh, like a vixen. Uh, throw a lot of walking baits. Throw a whopper plopper, stuff like that. A buzz bait, but everything I throw is on their CRT, which is their um, lowest price point model, mm -hmm. except for medium heavy fast tip. I throw it on braid, and it does a great job. Like it is an extremely versatile rod. So I mean, you don't have to buy. Like if your budget's not, you know, if you have a budget, right? You don't have to go super high end. The CRTs are the same blanks. They might have a, a little different reel seat. It might not have the feel-through thing. Hell, I think they do. The guides are a little bigger. There might be a couple less guides, but, I mean, you're still getting the great value, and I'm so sounding like a sales guy. Oh, yeah, you definitely are. The CRT rod is, is awesome. The elites are awesome. I, like, But I'm a cashing guy, so, I mean, I'm right. biased. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty biased, too. I, I I've got a lot of the Tatula Elite rods, man. That that seven three Bren Ayler rod is a really good swim jig rod, and I but you I know like the versatility of the Daiwa rods do because those guys are making them. Like Bren Ayler made that rod, and he's like, man, you can do drop shot, you can do Nico, you can do this, you can do that, and you can do the other. So I mean, if you had to buy something like that, you know, hell, you could you could have one spinning rod to rule them all. Yeah, that Cody Meyer rod is pretty damn nice. And that they make one that's a seven four bladed jig, big top water rod. It's got Randy Howell's name on it, which I really don't give a shit whose name's on there. But dude, that is the best rattle trap rod I've found in a long time. I do put a little weight in who designs the rods. Um, like you look back at Denny Brower and the flipping. Like when flipping first came on the scene, you know. You had D and then Denny Brower and, you know, all these guys. But, like, when you and I were growing up, Denny Brower was the dude as far as flipping jig. So, at the time, he was with Daiwa and he's making flipping rods. Like, I would want to buy the Denny Brower flipping rod. Yeah. You know? So, like, if if John Cruz, you know, Little John, Square Bill, hell, I'm going to buy the Cash and Square Bill rod, you know? Designed by John Cruz, the guy that designed the bait. Yeah. I got and you. And then the micro jig, like, that micro jig rod is designed by the same dude that designed the micro jig, and it's made, it's specifically made for that. And I don't care if you've got, you know, 25 rods by 15 different manufacturers, you know what I mean? Like, buy what works best for you. Absolutely. DIY bass fishing, $20, make you holler here. Duo Spies, A+. Plus. He says, I fought a 10-pound cat to get my duo back, and it came out unscathed. It's top-notch, and the new ones are super tough. So good quality in those. Lots of thought in the performance. You feel the duo difference immediately. I'll be honest with you, Byron. Duo Realis is a company that gets overlooked by the Lucky Crafts and the Mega Basses of the world, but they make some good stuff. You make some great stuff. Dude, I've got more duos than I do spin johns, right? And I've, I mean, the spin johns are newer, but I've caught more fish on the duos. Hell, I've caught some magnum crappies in West Tennessee on the duos. Uh-oh. Sleeper yeah. crappie bait right there. It's a sleeper crappie bait, for sure. Um, Yeah, that, uh, what is it? Is it the G... 62a or something like that it's not a square bill it's just a real shallow running crankbait it's got some rattles in it the one that roy hawk smashes them on i think uh, that's what it is G it's a really good bait and that apex vibe is pretty damn good too i got i got something uh-oh 
Yes, that Ayla Rod is killer. Uh, is that a bunch of OG bandits? Yes, sir. My gosh. 100 and 200 OGs, though. Every single one of them is non Pradco. I've been waiting for the price on those to get like wiggle warts. I mean, basically, an OG bandit you can get six to seven dollars out of. There's some that go high. Every single one of these is OG. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you don't have lure locks because you had to pull up about 15 boxes right there. I, I I don't I'm not trying to bash Lure Lock. I know you're not either. It's just no. You know our preference. Gas Mafia doesn't give me anything. Like if, like I've got more money back than any one person should have. Actually, that's not true. You should have a lot of money back. But... I don't have but about five or six of them. But oh, they God. are stuffed God. to the gills. I've got like I'm an OCD tackle freak, right? Like. Like, more organized than any one dude should be. But, like, if you can put all your Ned Bombs in one money bag, then do it. And then your Bomb Shots and your Destroyers and your Baby Destroyers, your Crawfathers. So, like, figure working for a bait company and then, like, my, it's tough. Like, this Skeeter probably could run faster if I didn't work for Missile. Because it's tough for me to carry just, like, two or three colors of a particular bait. I've got to have at least three bags of each color. And if it's D-bombs, forget it. Like, I've got, I mean, that, it's a freaking wad. Do y'all sell the 50 packs on your website of D-bombs or 25 packs? We sell the 25 counts on the website, but it's in the top selling colors. So you're not going to find all of them. Um, but it's the top selling This is colors. a very important question. Sean Myers wants to know your PB. My PB? 10 pounds, 11 ounces. I need to get on that level. I'm, I'm stuck at 9.4. Caught it twice. You can this winter. I know. I, I missed my window opportunity. I knew I should have come down there with you. I invited you. I know. I, hey, man, this TV show with Mark, that's my priority. I got to take care of our boy. Um, this is the exact bait I caught my PB on. Can you name it? Uh, it looks like some sort of osprey. Nope. God dang, I should be able to name that. Is smash that tech a, a smash tech headhunter? Very. Uh, that's actually similar to the babe. It is similar to the osprey. So I was throwing the osprey when I caught, and this this was the same day that I caught. 39 pounds, 13 ounces, um, in West Tennessee, on a lake we won't mention. No. Um, DIY bass fishing knows those lakes. He might know, but other than that, we're good. Yeah, you know, it's, it's got out. But, um, Chris, real quick, the Money Bags Gen 2s do not rip. They have a beefier zipper and a, a much improved Ziploc style closure. I know I shouldn't use the Ziploc word, but the closure is much better. So don't be afraid of the Gen 2s. And they do not rip. Do I have the old ones? I've never had an issue. I don't know. Well, I mean, the zipper was kind of... It was thin at the top. And I had some issues with the Ziploc part of it. Kind of peeling apart and breaking. Uh, but the Gen 2s are, are bomb-proof. Um, so I caught 39 pounds, 13 ounces worth of five fish. Caught a six. I caught a five. A six and change, an eight and change on an Osprey inline tournament talon. Then it kind of slowed off. I switched to the Smash Tech. I caught a nine even and then a ten pound eleven. Yeah. I've got pictures on my Instagram and Facebook and all that kind of stuff. And stuff. What's your What's your Instagram, Byron? Is it at Byron Childers? I should uh, know. I got my damn gum phone right here. No, you're fine. It's It's at Byron underscore Childers. Uh, I've been saying his last name wrong the whole time, but he's been making fun of my beard, so that's okay. You're lucky it's just your beard. <laughs> hey, 
And here's, here's, uh, so like great minds think alike. Mm-hmm. But how OG are you? I don't have any of those. Actually, I do. Original, this is the original packaging. Dude, I do right here. They're not in the packaging, but these are these are the OG ones right here. I haven't got the, this one's ready to throw. I've got the flashy swimmer on the bottom. Yeah. I tell you, I tell you who's got my other OG. Um, the original Battle Shad is Matt Robertson. Dude, I haven't got one of those yet. I can't, I can't find them in stock. Well, bud, we might could do some bait trading. Because I'm not sure if I need it. I like the Citizen so much. I don't know if... I've got it. Here's a, I got a seven and a half Battle Shad here. I'm trying to figure out why I would need a Battle Shad and the Citizen. So I can't tell you the well, number one, here's a battle shad right here. The nose is way more rounded. Hell, I'll just pull them out. Let's just make some bait show, bud. It's, yeah. yeah, I'm gonna stream tomorrow night too. I'm gonna have Epic Eric on here. He's he's my he's my guy. So there there's a big citizen. That's a seven five. And there's a that's that's the OG battle shad right there. And there's there's the new battle shad. So basically, I think what he done was take the old battle shad and make it into the citizen. And you see, you got a little fin on top, but you've got that same little hook pocket and everything. I feel like the battle shad is just a little bit more compact. You notice it doesn't have as long as tail. It's more rounded. It's more kind of like got that HD look to it. Maybe the difference between a bull shad and a bull shad HD. Oh, Toad wants to know the money bag. I think it, they're what nine bucks. Are they even that? Yeah, they might be a little more. Um, I don't know. You could be right. I'm, like the number that popped in my head was like fourteen bucks. I don't know, but mm -hmm. they last forever. The Gen Twos. Um. So the difference. I don't have an old one out here, but this one, it's got the beefier zipper. And then the ziplock closure is legit. You're not gonna Oh shit, we about knocked a laptop over. That's right. That's right. Yeah, hell, it's on the back of the boat. <laughs> but I mean it'll hold a ton of plastic. So like, here's my uh that's my Ned bombs. Like you can see the width of that. This thing weighs like six pounds. Dude. Yeah. We've been streaming for like I've been in a stream for two and a half hours. I'm, How much? You know, I got on here at 10. It's 12.30 my time. Good? I'm good. You're trying to make me... Hey, speaking of Spro, did you see this last week? My buddy Kyle gave Bateman Jr. a purple Spro frog with green flake on it. Like one of a kind? Huh? I guess. He had it custom painted. He even put purplish skirt material in here. He told me that he throws red all the time. He said, but they're, he said, when they're biting red and it gets real overcast, it goes to the purple. Man, I, I tend to, tend to go like white or black or like frog. Yeah, on a frog, man, I keep it really simple. I throw red, white, or black, period. Uh, there's, for some reason, red gets bit. I don't know why. Uh, Craig Hipsher, Kentucky Lake guy, I'm sure you've heard of Craig. He turned me on that red a few years ago. Um, what else are you gonna buy with them gift cards, other than swim baits and what's hey, some... so like I've got Bass Mafia boxes on my list, um, more money bags, a bunch of line like Sunline. Love Sunline. You throw Assassin or Sniper? Dude, I haven't ever tried Assassin. Oh, good so... news, good stuff. I throw I throw sniper on most stuff. The crank FC is really cool. Mm -hmm. And then I've recently gone to twenty two pound shooter for my big baits, which it's not cheap. No, it's so so good. Um, you ever use mono? 
just to show you I'm not biased, right? So, like, I love my cash and rods. I've got a bunch of them. But I'm, I'm working with them on, on making a good swim bait rod. But until then, the G Loomis IMX Pro 966. It's a badass rod. And you see the reel that's on there, which I think we'd both agree on, the Tranks 300. So I bought this power handle by mistake. Do you like it? Because I don't, I, 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 I won't buy one with in this. I don't like power handles. I've never used one. I don't know if I'd like it. So I just stick with what I got. So here's here's my opinion, right? So Colin Walls, our buddy. Oh, Colin. He's um, in Team Short Guy. He's super Team Short Guy. Like, we, you and I make him look short. Um, but he works out way more than us, and he looks like oh, he'd whip my ass. Like, like, man, all the vitamins he takes, like, it takes me a minute to get all his piss off the back of this boat. <laughs> um, so, and he can't reach, he's not tall enough to reach over the full side of it. Um, he, he's like, dude, I know you just ordered the wrong one, but just try it out. Just, just do it. If you don't like it, you can order the other handle for 30 bucks, whatever. So, um, I get it in. And, and I put it on the 966, which is the heavier. And I use that for my HUDs, like the HUD 68s, the 8-inch HUDs, uh, the, the tournament talons, you know, on the, with the jig hook. And I, I'm, I'm, I'll give Tactical Bassin a nod here. They're not wrong. So, like, you fire that thing out there, you let it go to the bottom, and you're creeping it. It is easier to creep the bigger baits on the bottom with the power handle. Oh, yeah? Because you're thinking about it, you're going, you're thinking about it more, so you can really slow down with the power handle. And then when you get bit, it, it just like they said, it's just a little kick. And I'm thinking, oh, God, I think that's a bite. So you reel down, and you jack them, and then you start cranking, and that thing, I had an eight pounder, you know, it was work to get it off the bottom at first, but when it started coming up, it came up to the surface. I skied that bitch to the boat with the power handle. And the dude that was, was like, man, I've never seen an eight pounder skied across the top of the water. I'm like, well, with a jig hook and that much plastic in its face, you don't want to fight it. You want to set the hook and flip it in the boat. Yeah, so a lot of guys ask me how... You know, they, they say they lose a lot of fish on a crankbait. And I'll, I'll, I'll go fishing with them. And they get a bite out, you know, at the end of the cast or whatever. And then all of a sudden, they're in, like, I can alley mode where, oh, God, it's a giant. And they're trying to play it around the boat. And I'm like, dude, just freaking rail on that some bitch and get it up to the top of the water. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, this is a weird question, and maybe you can't answer it. How's the Ike's... Missile, and so is I missile jigs or is he missile baits? Ike is missile jigs. So, okay. Um, every every missile jig, right? So like, there's missile baits and missile jigs. Now it's the same company, but it's not. Um, the missile jigs is there because Ike has his other sponsors mm -hmm. that works very well with, and and. You know, they make great baits together. Um, he, he didn't, he got with John and wanted to design some jigs. So John and Iconelli design all the missile jigs. And that's why you see like the Ike's mini flip, Ike's head banger, um, Ike's micro football, all that kind of stuff. And like, so Ike is with missile jigs, not missile baits. Just to not conflict with his other sponsors. Yeah, I gonna say it. I think Ike's one of the one of the OGs. One, of, I think he's a great representative of bass fishing. No doubt. Like he had he had a rough start. As some people may think. Um, and you either love him or you hate him. But Ike and Ellie gives back tenfold to what he puts in too. Well, and, and I'll put it this way: so like Ike was well known before social media right right 
So he kind of started that trend. Um, and there's other people that may not, and I'm not saying this about Ike, but there's other people that may not catch as many fish, but they're more controversial. Right. So they get attention. Mm-hmm. So I kind of started that trend, and this isn't a negative at all, but like he became a household name. And whether you love him or you hated him back in the day, you knew who he was, and you knew he ran a Toyota truck, and you knew he ran a Bass Cat, and you knew he had Berkeley, yeah, missile jig. Like you knew everything about him, whether you love him or you hate him. And so, so like you look at social media nowadays, and it's like, well, you know, no, you know, uh, all press is good press, right? Whether mm-hmm. it's negative or positive. And he's chilled out. He's gotten a little older. He's chilled out. Um, but I will say, from an industry standpoint, like that dude moves the needle. Mm-hmm. Like see him, at, like he'll come by the booth that I cast and hang out, and we'll hand him a, a you know, a mini flip jig. He'll just, he'll get in that camera, and he can detail explain. I really than- like his Ike in the shot videos, and I would guarantee he shoots them on one cut. I mean, he, oh, yeah. I worked with him one time, and he's one of the best ever at that stuff uh john's really good ish is really good like we've got a really really good team at missile like i'm i'm not unhappy with anybody no but dude it's 12 30 at night man i've got to somehow make a thumbnail i've got i sold some baits on facebook i've got to get shit out post office runs tomorrow um i'm gonna stream again for the guys in the chat uh i gotta do my giveaways uh tomorrow and then the big live stream epic eric will be on here we're going to talk some spinner baits and who knows what we'll end up talking about but uh byron dude i appreciate you jumping on here hijacking the broadcast uh i'm not gonna yeah, lie I didn't, to, I didn't mean to hijack nothing but i enjoyed it no you're welcome anytime my friend anytime um we'll get uh, get on some ledge fishing stuff or whatnot we talked big swimmers one night uh I just can't stream like I was doing, you know, I've got to go to my freaking real job, which sucks, but, you know, I'll get to 30,000 subs to quit about the time I get ready to retire from building windows, and um, who knows, but uh, guys, make sure you check out Byron's Instagram, you can order any missile baits there from uh, the missile website, or Tackle Warehouse, or the Hookup Tackle, or, well, no, they don't carry missile. If we're not, go in there and ask for it specifically. Tell them to call me, and I'll take care of it. Yeah, but say Bateman told you to carry them. That way I can get some street cred for it. But oh, you, yeah, you mean, I don't care if you say it was Bateman. Hey, Walmart, ca- Walmart carries missile baits. My Walmart has Superbug D-bombs, and that's always the color you can't ever find. True. I just don't carry but three colors. Green Pumpkin, yeah. Superbug, and that might and one other like watermelon red or something like that. So like, if if somebody here, I'll make a deal. If somebody gets a tackle dealer that doesn't carry missile right now, to call me and say, "Hey, Kevin, the Apple Beer Man <laughs> told me to call because he had one of his viewers, but like Apple Beer Man needs to be said to me from the dealer." I will hook that dude up. Uh-oh. You guys heard it. Whoever it is. I'll tell you what we need to do, Byron. Kevin, the apple beer man. When we do, we need to... You send me some baits to the house, and we'll do a hell of a giveaway. We can do that. We, we need to get them football. It, it, we could do just a little variety. A missile starter pack. You know, some, some micro jigs, some quivers, some D-bombs. You know, you know, fifty, fifty, sixty dollars worth of stuff. We're just gonna give it away. I want somebody that doesn't throw missile baits, doesn't have a lot. We can get in that. So we can do. We'll work on that after the stream. But guys, I appreciate y'all joining. Uh, the giveaways I'm talking about that I'm doing tomorrow night. Uh, there's a couple videos from the past. Uh, it's about a week ago. I'm giving away some black dog baits, and all you gotta do is comment with your favorite top water bait. You probably see it in there somewhere, and then. The six cent sack. If you make an order on their website, use my code Bateman. Screenshot uh, your order, 
and send it to me on email, in, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and I'll write your name down, Bateman Jr. Draw out a hat. So, but uh, I'm gonna jump off here, man. I got some honeydews I gotta take care of, and uh, Byron, I'm gonna end the Skype. Yeah, man. Thanks for making fun of me. I'll bring some bush light tomorrow night to make up for it. Hey, my, anytime, dude. My pleasure. All right. Thanks, Byron. See ya. All right, guys. I appreciate y'all jumping in here. And I had a blast tonight on a Friday night. Um, I'm going to blow myself up really quick. And I had a blast on a Friday night here on YouTube. So I probably won't change the thumbnail till tomorrow morning, but... Uh, Anyway, thank you guys so much for joining. You guys are awesome. Shout out to Byron Childers. Got his name right. And uh, you know what? Red's Apple. Appreciate that. Let's see if they'll give me 10% off on my next order. Uh, appreciate it, guys. Hope you guys that are going fishing snatch a few 